What is up guys and welcome back this week on Short Story Long. We have Maddie Matheson. Uh, I was so, so, so excited about this interview. I watched his interview with Jesus and Miro. If you haven't seen it on Viceland, go check it out right now. Look it up on YouTube. It is absolutely hilarious. Best interview I've ever seen. And Maddie was in town and he came through for an interview with Short Story Long. We're over here right now. We're currently putting the final edits. This is where it all goes down with the man, Dan. Say what's up, Dan. What's up, guys? See, there he is. That's where the magic happens. Um, we go through Maddie's whole life story from doing crazy drugs, hanging out with his friends, crazy party stories, including something that's called doing zombie lines, which is like cocaine and special K and a bunch of weird other stuff, and then somehow becoming extremely, extremely successful, having multiple restaurants, um, having multiple shows on Viceland, and where he's going in the future and what's next for him. So please tune into this one. You're going to love it. One of my favorite interviews ever. One of the best people on this planet, Maddie Matheson. Let's do it. The hardest part is figuring out what you want to master. Focus on your product. Can you tell somebody that they suck? You gotta just go for This it. is exactly what I want to do for a living. You can't even tell somebody that their breath is fit to life. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Short Story Long. I am very, 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 very excited about today's guest uh, because he is uh, a pretty incredible person with a pretty incredible story. And I will say that... Um, He's one of the funnier guys on the planet Earth. Yeah, Maddie Matheson, thank you for uh, coming and doing this, man. Hello. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> How's great. that intro? That's a good intro. I think that's good. You know, it's pretty low key, you know. It's not I'm, a... I'm funny. It's like a it's a slow build. Yeah, I mean, funniest person on earth, like not a big deal. Not, not much a big to deal. live up to. I'm just, you know, I'm completely unscripted. That's why I'm funny. Yeah, yeah. I will say we 100% just 100% original material. That's it. We just watched your interview uh, with Jesus and Miro. I, d I told you that. Yeah. Uh, and it was one of the funnier pieces of content uh, that I've ever seen. Yeah. Like the way that we were just talking about it, but the way that you, uh, your dynamic with those two guys was just hilarious. So to all the listeners, make sure you go check go that out. Go watch that. That's a good this. thing. Yeah. That's. It, I thought it was one of the funnest interviews I've ever done. Yeah. It was just... Um, Real off the cuff. Yeah. And I think like it, just like a lot of people, I think a lot of people just need to just talk yeah. the way that they would usually talk. Yeah. But you, I feel like you just sort of, it seems like, I mean, uh, I guess I'll know better after this conversation, but it seems like you kind of don't have that block that a lot of people have, right? Like you have this ability to be genuinely yourself and it's a very sort of endearing mm. thing, right? Where I feel like a lot of people just have like, a, you know, you have that, that, second guessing everything you say and being insecure and blah 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 like yeah. you've learned to just sort of let it flow it seems like well i can say whatever the fuck i want to say because i ain't got no trash yeah you know yeah. like i don't have um i don't got baggage or any weird skeletons in my closet yeah. i've already told my fucking story and so i'm kind of free of watching what i have to fucking say yeah. and i'm in a position where um you know i ain't got a puppet master or, or yeah. like a fucking I don't know. I can say whatever the fuck I want to say at any time. Yeah. And uh, nobody can hold you accountable. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, yo, on public, on national television, I'm going to say my dick is small in a rainbow. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do about that? Yeah. My dick's small. It ain't big. Yeah. Factual. <laughs> and, not, and, facts. and you don't get like a weird email from like an agent or something that yeah, says, hey, like, I don't know about the dick small uh, thing. The dick small thing. Maybe is medium one thing. sized dick on the next one. Why don't you just perfectly, I'm a perfectly average. I'm a perfectly you know? average hung man. Just man. A, like, Maybe six inches with the wind behind me. Yeah. You know? Just clear a up. Screaming wind fire coming in, pushing through my penis. <laughs> six inches. Hopefully. We just gotta clear your clear your public image. <laughs> yeah. No. But people, why can't you talk? Like that's the thing. If people just actually talked how they usually talk, I think everything would yeah. every like I people go in with this agenda these agendas. Yeah. I'm like, if I'm I think the best way to promote something is to just be yourself yeah and like who like oh i got a tv show it's about cooking it's a uh, uh, what do you cook on spaghetti uh eggplant uh just why don't you just talk about <laughs> shit you know yeah, like i'm yeah. like i don't know but some people have that skill man you have that skill like i think people build up this like perception and build you know it's an authenticity issue and all these different things but that is your I will say that's something that shows about you from far away mm. meaning you can watch one interview and see that and that's what's so uh 
so endearing about it. You know what I mean? Well, Do you ever get you. nervous like like before Jesus and Miro interviews or big interviews? Yeah, I'm scared about everything. Yeah. I think if you're not scared, then you're ignorant and you don't care and you're stupid. Yeah. Like I uh I think it's very um it is nerve wracking putting yourself out there, but I'm still not I'm not afraid of putting myself out there, but I'm definitely um like I'm definitely trying to perform, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. in the sense of like I'm trying to be funny and say what I really want to say. Yeah. And that is stressful. And um, you know, every time I speak, um, like I don't do a lot of these things and I've recently done a few just like speaking engagements. Really? And I spoke in front of um in Canada, I spoke uh in front of a college and you know, there's a few hundred people there which blew my mind. Yeah. And I spoke for like an hour and a half and that was wild. What'd and I did zero about? prep. I did zero prep. What did you talk about? Like what, what was the sort of I, I just line? talked about like I think a lot of people just because I kind of came from nowhere, like I just made a video with Vice, you know, yep. about four and a half years ago. I made a fucking cheeseburger video. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, you know, four and a half years later, I got three seasons of a show, like Dead Set on Life. And then, uh, you know, I got a season of It's Supper Time with another one in the bag still. Yep. And it's just a funny thing where it's just, um, I just talk about how my life has changed. You know, I used to be a psycho. I used to be a very typical chef, I think, yeah, yeah. in this world. Yeah. I was a very typical, you know, drugs and alcohol. Yeah. Um, I'm really lucky that no no shitty dude dude vibes, though, because I've always been with the same girl. Yeah, yeah. That's true, <laughs> married man. Married to. That's a huge, like, you skipped a big chunk of darkness. Yeah. I'm, uh, I wouldn't say I'm lucky, but uh, because I always cared and loved my wife, but... Uh, yeah, there's some shitty, shitty shit going on. It'll man. take you down a deep, a dark path. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of Kitchen Confidential. And uh, I just, that really took me into like the underbelly of the chef world, right? And like how yeah. I didn't really realize. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, uh, I think that book, I first read that book when I was in 2000. Mm -hmm. And um, I identified with a lot of it. Mm hmm. You know, I identified with a lot of it. I was uh, doing a lot of drugs. I was in cooking school. You know, I just moved to Toronto from Fort Erie, mm -hmm. which is a small ass town, to a big city, and I just loved it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, mm -hmm. I drank the Kool Aid, and um, I loved, I loved it because I was already like, um, you know, I was using drugs in high school. I was drinking in high school. So I let's do this. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's go all the way back to the beginning because I want to go through that whole path. Yeah, we right. got paths. So, so I got paths for days. So you are from Fort Erie, is what it's called. Yeah, Fort Erie, home of Murder Beats. Yo, shout out to Murder <laughs> Beats. Shout out to Murder Beats. Let's do a track. Get this voice out there. Me and the Quavo and the Erie. Offset. Yeah. I don't know the other guy's name. Put Take the off. Migos. Throw Maddie in there. Let's go, Beatsy. <laughs> oh man, the only, the only, are you guys the only two people to make it out of Fort Erie? I don't know. <laughs> Yo, shout out to Nick Morgani. Shout out to fucking Cook. Shout out to Tamble, the Ice Man. No, That's the Fort know. Erie crew. Yeah, there's some homies. Shout out to Ray. That's so good. Okay, so you went. So you were there. you you were there until when? Uh, I moved to Toronto in 2000. Like I was, I was born in St. John, New Brunswick. Yep. Then lived in Nova Scotia for a while in Dartmouth. Um, and then I moved to Ontario in like grade five. Got it. And then lived in like London, Ontario. Lived in St. Thomas, Ontario. Why so many places? Uh, my dad's an entrepreneur. Got it. Yeah. Uh, my dad's an entrepreneur. He had a company uh, called Dynamatics. Or was a part of a company called Dynamatics uh -huh. uh, that brought us from, that's what brought us from uh, the Maritimes to Ontario. Yep. And then, um, and then that, uh, I think it's still around, but I, I think he got out of that and then he just did his own thing. Uh, and then we just kind of bopped around and then we, we really settled in Fort Erie. Yep. Um, at what age? Uh, I was in grade five. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Grade five. Grade five, I ended up in Fort Erie. And then from there, you know, shout out to Garrison Road. Shout out to fucking. You know, Fort Erie. <laughs> so then, whatever. Yeah. So I was like a kid in Fort Erie, going to elementary school. Um, you had know, a big family, right? Three brothers and I had two brothers, two brothers and a sister. And then, yeah, Sarah, my big sister. Yep. Uh, yeah, I got uh, older brother, 
Shout out to Beave. A younger brother, shout out to Grizz. Yeah. Everyone's got just. We got just older I call my brothers. I call my brothers like their nicknames. Beef and Grizz. Beef. Yeah. And Beef but Sarah's to, just Sarah. Yeah, Sarah's just Sarah. Yeah. She's a sweetie. Yeah. God bless Sarah. <laughs> so is your sister younger? No, she's the oldest. Damn. So oldest is sister, then brother. Then my brother ahead of Steve, you, then you, who's then. Beef, and then Adam, and then AJ, young, who's Grizz. Young Grizz. Because it's crazy. Because like Grizz is big, right? Grizz is like taller than me. And uh, he's got like a big, always has like a big black beard. Yeah. And uh, so he's he... like a big built dude. He was like a uh, like a pipe fitter got for it. a while. And then Gr- and then Beav is my older brother, and he's shorter than me. And he's just like a ripped, crazy person. Really? Yeah. He's like one of those like, he's wild. He's a, <laughs> he's like I was always like low key because he was like the he was the wild card really yeah he was the he was the real psycho i can't believe you somebody <laughs> the younger brother is the wild card of the family you're the like more mellow one yeah well no my older brother my older brother was the oh, he, the older, he older, was older. like the real scrappy real scrappy in your face like no problem throwing hands what are people doing in fort Erie? are they like fist fighting each other a lot or not really i think on average, if you were to go to a bar in Fort Erie back in the day, like yeah. when I was there, there'd be a scrap for every, sure. Like almost every time. Yeah, there's a lot of scraps. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, like I think it was like, it was like one of those things where you get in a scrap and then you're like doing a key bump and drinking a beer with each yeah. other. Yeah. You know, like I think it was just like one of the small town, hockey town. Mm-hmm. Like nobody was afraid to kind of throw hands. Yeah. That's how it was in Ohio. And like it, it was either like you were with a girl or you were fighting. Yeah. You know, and like the cops don't care. No, all the cops are your buddy's dads. Like because yeah. we're such a small town. Yeah. So it was just like even like the border patrol, like we're a border town, right? So like if you were from Fort Erie, like you would get waved through the border pretty easily, like coming back with yeah. like shit or um, you know that How kind funny. of stuff. Um, what type of shit? Like what type of what do you guys do for fun? Like can you try to like I'm trying to wrap my head around Fort like, Erie, Fort Erie, fun, Fort yeah. Erie, fun. Like we were well, we were like you know obviously me and my brothers are all two years apart, mm-hmm. so then our crew was pretty big because uh-huh. we were all, yeah. you know, we were all friendly. Like me and my brothers, we were buddies. You know, we weren't ones that like hated each other. So yeah. we hung out all the time. Yeah. So, uh, and then like my older brother's crew, my crew, and then my little brother's crew. And then it was pretty funny. Like we lived by this, there's like a park, Ferndale Park. Mm-hmm. And we used to just mob out at the park and hang out, you know, doing acid, like chilling, yeah. smoking weed. So you were doing acid doing and shit stuff. when you were young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I was doing all that stuff very early. Yeah. Um, very early. And anything like, um, did you ever have phases of organized sports or anything like that? Or it's uh, more just... I played. I played lacrosse. Uh huh. I played lacrosse. Forty Hawks. Uh-huh. Um, I played baseball. <laughs> I uh, I was like third base and catcher. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just really early, like obviously, um, I was like the fat brother. Mm-hmm. Right, like nobody else in my family's fat. Are Beav and Grizz both ripped? <laughs> yeah, well, Grizz, Grizz at his like Grizz was ripped when he was working like construction. Yeah, and he would like come home and work out, and he was like <laughs> he would always ask if I wanted a massage, and he would just like crush my shoulders and like <laughs> he would just like kind of smush me up. Yeah, but and then and then Beav, Steve, Steve's he was ripped. He's still ripped. He he works construction now, and he's yeah, he's just like this like yeah, he's a pistol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. And what about your parents' dynamic, like with you guys? Did Stephen they kind Joan? of Joan? Stephen Jones, Stephen Jones, dude. Jones. Did Stephen Jones just sort of let you live, or were yeah, they dude, like... we uh, we had an interesting. They're the fucking best. Yeah, yeah. Like my parents are the fucking best. Yeah. Um, everyone. There was like definitely some kids that weren't allowed to come over to our house, mm-hmm. kind of vibe, but in the best possible. Like I don't want to make it sound like our house was like some trap house. Like we had this like <laughs> um like my parents. Would have like every weekend, like when we were in high school, like late high school. Uh-huh. Like my parents would have parties where other adults and friends would come over, and and then we would be hanging out in our garage doing our thing, and yeah. like we just had a really we had like an open door policy at our house. Yeah, that's cool. like we had like my mom was cooking food for like twenty motherfuckers all the time. Like yeah. we always had food. We always like it was just like an open like that's the like we had an open door policy. Yeah, yeah. If you were, we would be hanging because there was like three kids and like again like we would sometimes it would just be like me and my friends and then some of adam's friends would come over yeah. and there wouldn't be um adam wouldn't be home so then they would come and just hang yeah. or like steve's friends would come and hang. like it was just like a weird thing where we just had like all these couches in the garage um and we would just hang out there and um 
And then on the weekends, like like everyone like the Bills would play. Yeah. Like we would always have like my dad would do a ton of barbecue yeah. and like grills. Like my dad always was grilling meats and steaks and all that kind of shit. And like it was just a really good vibe. Yeah. Like I think it was just like there it was one of those things where we would rather you you be doing this shit here yeah. than outside. Yeah. Not that Fort Erie's like rough and it was like this inner city shit, yeah. but like I think it was just like a chill vibe where we just had a spot and we could chill and yeah. fucking do our thing. Yeah. Like we used to have big parties, that's for sure. That's so cool. And like were your parents like drinking and stuff too? Like they weren't like Yeah, they were they were them yeah. and their friends were no, partying. They were they too. were partying. Yeah. Like um yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, that's cool. Um they don't drink no more, but uh like my whole family's pretty much sober. Really? Yeah. And that's not in a, a cool... yeah. In one way or another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just a cool vibe. I don't know. I think that's such a cool thing, like when that can happen. And especially when the dynamic between your brothers is so uh, friendly, right? Because a lot of times, especially when you're that close, like brothers hate each other. Yeah, well, there was like a, it was definitely a love and hate thing. Like there was like, a, there was like a, like my older brother always, you know, because he's the older brother. So he was always trying to be the cooler one. Yeah. And always like, yo, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Like there was times where it'd be like, yo, Matt, like you can't hang right now. Yeah. And there'd be times where we could hang, and but he would be the one that would say when and where, yep. or whatever. Because yep. like we all used to like across from the park, across from Ferndale Park, there is a road called Buffalo Road, uh -huh. and then there was a big like a wooded area, and then we had this like kind of cutout called the Honeycomb. Mm -hmm. So there was all these like areas Got in it. the Honeycomb, Got it. and we used to just like literally we would like steal like the bleachers from the park from the soccer fields uh -huh. and like carry them at night back there. And then like the city would come and like pull them back. And yeah, like, cause like, everyone knew like, yeah. So we would have like, that's where we would have like all our bush parties and yeah. shit like that. Yeah. But it was like right across from our house. So we were, we were like back in the honeycomb, like a lot. I can't believe I'm talking about the honeycomb. The fucking honeycomb made it to the, Dude. made it to the, to the <laughs> yeah. podcast world. What, yeah. um, what, uh, what about school? What was your school environment? Like, um, did you do well in school? Did you hate school? No, Did you skip school? I, I, no. I hated school, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Well, not obviously, but um, I was like, um, I went to like public high school. I went to like Fort Erie High, mm -hmm. and I was asked not to come back in grade nine. Why? Uh, just this fighting, <laughs> fighting and some bullshit. Mm -hmm. And I just. Uh, they're just like, yeah, this isn't like you're not getting like expelled, but like maybe go find another high school. <laughs> what and, a weird, polite way to like. Yeah, like it was like a weird thing. So then I went to, um, I went to. Uh, it took me a while. It took me like negotiating. Like I really had to kind of fight to get into this uh, Lakeshore Catholic High, uh -huh. which was like about a thirty minute drive <laughs> from where I grew up. Mm -hmm. It was in Port Colborne, and uh, you know. And then that's where I got it. I had to like, I had like green hair. I had to dye my hair. I fucking showed up, and I was like a pretty punky looking kid. So I had like nail polish and like dyed hair and all this shit. And this is like, what ninety six, I guess. Yep. So um, they weren't down for that. No, uh, no, I had to like fix some shit yeah. because I had to go to school. Like it was, my parents were like, yo, this is the only other school that's close enough where yeah. it's not going to be like, I ain't driving you to school. Yeah. Like, you know, so yeah. this was the only other high school that I could go to where buses went to Fort Erie. Yeah. So, um, I had to, that was the school that I had to go to. Uh, and then that's where I went and that's where I really, I still, you know, that's where I got like, I got my lifelong friends still that I like whenever I go back to Fort Erie more from there. Yeah, no, for sure. Like those are like my dudes. Yeah. Like, you but know. more from the second high school than. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fort Erie, like I was there for grade nine. Yeah. I was pretty fucked then. So. Yep. But that didn't change. Like you still didn't like school at the. New no, school. I just I was like a fifty percentile student. I would like constantly be talking to teachers, being like, "What do I have?" Like my conversation would just be like, "What do I have to do to just pass?" Yeah. Like tell me, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> I ain't trying to be a science yep. fucking scientist. Yeah. I'm not going to be a mathematician. I'm not going to be whatever the fuck this sociology bullshit is. I don't give a fuck about algebra and fucking obtuse fucking triangles. Get the fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. I ain't trying to do this. I'm yeah. not an academic. Yeah. So that worked. You yeah. Like, I had, I had, did they kind of level with you? Like, all right, man. Yeah. Like my vice principal, she, we had a very not love and hate relationship. We had a, a hate relationship. I, I got suspended a lot, mm -hmm. and I just would always just be like, "Yo, like, just get me the fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'll be done if you get me the fuck out of here. Yeah. So give me the fifty, 
Yep. Just give me the like all I, I was always just like kind of like being like, give me the 50. Yeah. yeah. Give <laughs> give me the 50. I'll do whatever I have to do to get the 50. <laughs> give me the fuck out of here. Yeah. I'm gonna move to Toronto and fucking do whatever the fuck I need to do to move to that city. Yep. Okay, so then is Toronto like the Toronto's the big sort of opportunity city close to that area, right? Yeah, it's the biggest city in Canada. It's yeah. the big it's like moving to, you know, New York yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, like yeah. it's just like it's the city. Because that's like, how I felt about LA. When I was in Ohio, I was I was a decent student, um, but I I just knew like the moment that I graduated. Like I remember I skipped SAT and ACT day or whatever, right? Yeah. I didn't ever took those because I just knew the moment I graduate I am going to LA. Right. And it was the same thing. It was like I don't really know what I'm gonna do. I wanted to like work at a skate shop, right? But yeah. it was like I just wanna be in LA because I know I'll, I'll figure it out there. Right. Yeah, there'll just, be something. Yeah, I just know it's better than here, right? Um so as soon as you graduated, you moved to Toronto, is that what happened? Yeah, yeah. Like um I got accepted, you know, I applied uh to a few different schools. I got accepted into like the culinary program at Humber College. And why is... that did you already know you liked cooking? No, it was just the only thing that you didn't need grades to get into. Yeah. Like it literally like I did not think I was going to be a chef. I didn't yeah. want to be a chef. There was no desire to uh I didn't know who the fucking great French chefs in the, of the world were. Yeah. I didn't know nothing. I was just like okay, like what how much is a semester and what do you need to get in? Oh, you don't need grades to get in? Yeah, yeah that's my shit. I can go cook? Cool. I have to put on chef whites, whatever. Yeah. Um, whatever the fuck this is. Yep. I'm I can live in Toronto. I can be close to a subway line where I can go downtown and see like punk shows and like be a part of something. Yeah. Like I just wanted to move to Toronto to like go to like punk shows and hardcore shows and that's so um good. that kind of shit. Because like growing up in Fort Erie, the one thing that the best thing about Fort Erie uh -huh. was having Buffalo, New York right next to me. Yep. Like I would be in Buffalo every weekend going to punk shows, yep. going to basement shows fucking meeting some amazing people yeah uh and really being a part of that like hardcore community yeah um that really like i think is like one of the greatest things in the world yeah did you have any um sort of goal or vision of what you thought maybe your your dream was or or not yet? not at that no yeah not at that point yeah. like i was just very much um at going to school to get the fuck out of town yeah right like yeah. that scenario yeah um and then i just wanted to get out of fort erie um i got into humber i moved to humber uh lived in the dorms and it was sick i was like oh it's sick there's fucking bus like in fort erie there's no buses mm -hmm. like it's like that small of a town there's like one bus and it's called like the welfare wagon yeah. and you'd like <laughs> throw rocks at it or something you know yeah. or you're like oh, like if it goes by you just everyone just stops and like screams welfare wagon <laughs> like like brat shit um <laughs> Yeah. But like, uh, you know, moving to Toronto, I was just like, it was really crazy. Like, and I was living in Rexdale, mm -hmm. which is like a pretty rough area. And uh, like, I remember it was wild. Like the first time, or no, this was my second, when I moved out of dorms, uh -huh. I, I was living like it, Humber's pretty much in Rexdale. Uh -huh. And then I moved into Rexdale. And the first night there was like a gunshots. And I was just like, wow, <laughs> fucking gunshots. This is sick. I was like, I'm finally in the city. This is like, I was like so stoked. I was living with like three drug dealers, <laughs> and uh, I was just like, man, this is crazy. This is the best, man. And you were hyped, dude. It you was were the not best. Like stretched out. It was know. like the coolest. It was yeah. the best, yeah. dude. I loved it. Uh, um, so, what did life look like? Like, meaning, did you go to school? Like, uh, paint me the picture of like uh, school. So you're going to school in the day. You come home going to punk shows at night. Yeah, just. Um, Going to school, like, uh, 8 a.m. class every day, uh -huh. right? If uh -huh. you were late, um, they locked, like, my chef, um, all the chefs, they would lock the door at pretty much quarter to eight. Yep. So you, if you were late, you weren't getting into class. If you missed three classes, you'd be kicked out of that course. If you were kicked out of a course, you'd be fucking kicked out. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> really early on, I was just like, yo, if I get kicked out, then I'm not going to be able to, like, live in Toronto. So... I really um, quickly learned to wake up early yeah. and like go to fucking school. Yeah. And which was wild where you don't have your parents. Like I was just like, oh yeah, I'm doing this. I got to go to school. I got to be an adult. Yeah. And, um, and I just loved it. I lo like, I loved right away. I loved cooking school. Mm -hmm. And, and then at nighttime, like I'd, I'd go in 8 a.m. or whatever, like usually around 7 30, because I just lived in the dorm. So I would like get checked, like shower, you know shower in the communal showers at, in the dorm <laughs> yeah. go put my chef whites on 
and walk across the parking lot, go into the Humber, um, do school, you know, cook some fucking whatever the fuck, make some <laughs> beef stock and fucking butcher a rabbit or whatever the fuck it was, make yeah. some chicken liver pate, you know, make gravlax, um, funny cooking school shit. Yep. And, and then I would just go home and, you know, pop some ease, do some coke, drink beers all night. Like just regular shit, right? Yeah. Like it just college stuff, like very um and then you just wake up and you go to school. Yeah. Like it was a very like in the dorms, it was like every single night you'd party and it was sick. And like and because in the dorms you could find somebody to party with every single night. Yeah. So it may yeah. not be like your dude, but you would definitely be able to find like a crew of dudes or people fucking partying. Yeah. And be like, Oh, what are you doing tonight? Cool. Let's get a bag, some fucking do some shit. Yeah. Party, drink fucking twenty beers. Yeah. And then wake up at six a.m. I don't know how. Go I to mean, bed. At, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's wild to think about now. Like I think about that shit. Like if I'm not in bed <laughs> by like midnight, yeah. I am so stressed. <laughs> yeah. Like if I'm not in my house by like midnight, I'm fucking like, what the fuck am I doing? What am I a crackhead? <laughs> yeah. Like I'm out with like adults doing stuff, and I'm just like, what am I doing? Yeah. Like this is so fucked. Yeah. And then it's midnight. I'm like, you wouldn't even start like partying till midnight. Yeah, well, Some you're sleeping nights. like two hours. Yeah, like I didn't. Yeah, I didn't sleep for like ten years. Yeah, you know, like it's crazy. Like, it's a wild, wild. Like, yeah, no sleeping. Yeah, Have but always... being able to function too, right? Like that was the like I think back on that now. I was like, yo, I must have looked like a fucking sick. Like, cause you don't even have photos really from back then, cause you didn't have smartphones it's or like true. any of that kind of stuff. Like, you have like funny little. It's really funny. Like I have like V eight. Like um, I had like a mini cam. And like my buddy set up like a Dropbox, and we've been like dumping like videos from college into it because yeah. we all had like cameras. Yeah. So yeah, there's like some too. skater dudes that yeah, were in the why, dorm, yeah. and they were always videotaping. I always had a camera because I used to video like hardcore shows. Yep. And so like we always had all these stuff, and um, it's weird. We got like a lot, and it's so sick looking. I was like, dude, if somebody was to like take this and chop it up, it would look like the sickest video. Oh, it's sick. Because it's like just the style. Yeah. Like everyone was wearing like uh, the dudes that I hung out with. Mostly in dorms, were all like white kids from like small farm towns, mm -hmm. and they like, came like it was the opposite. Like I got to the city and I was just like punk, mm -hmm. you know, or like har hardcore vibe. And like these kids that I hung out with would just go downtown to like Young Street in Toronto and just come back with like Avrex, full like Avrex, yeah. or like like Fubu, or like all this shit, like all one color fucking monogram shit, <laughs> yeah, like and, velour. Yeah, and just like <laughs> yo. Know, they sold like you know a few grams of coke, and they thought they were just like Rick Ross mm -hmm, or some shit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's just like funny. Um, that's really funny. Just a bunch of crazy wild and white kids. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> you're gonna use that footage somewhere sometime. I think there's some you good mean, shit. Somewhere man. Find and use. it's crazy. Like, you look at it, and you're like, like there's some people that have died. There's some people that have like moved on and done some really cool shit. There's yeah. some people that are stuck. Yeah, like it's a really wild thing to look back on, like college students. Yeah. Um, and just kind of see where there's people with like mad kids, there's people with no kids, there's people like it's a really wild thing to be like how crazy, like what really brought us together and then where all these people have gone and yeah, done yeah. is a really wild thing to really puts perspective on like people's past and like that kind of shit. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really interested in that shit. And that's obviously like part of the stuff that I'm learning through this podcast because I'm sitting with so many people and listening to their stories. And it's like, what makes someone go this way and someone else go that way and you know what i mean there's, there's a, lot a lot of, of little luck, decisions a lot of man. little decisions yeah i always like one of the like it's a lot of little good decisions it is people got to really start making good decisions yeah i've made a lot of bad ones and i've you know a lot of people say i got a horseshoe up my ass yeah. and uh i think there's a little bit of that for sure <laughs> yeah. um but um you know i've done some gnarly wild shit yeah and done some um some stuff i've lived i've lived a few lives already <laughs> that's for sure yes you have um when did you start liking cooking um in cooking school okay. because i and i've said this before publicly so i feel kind of weird but but it was the first time i, I really started growing in some like real self-esteem yeah because i was in really enjoying school because i was like if I do well, I'm gonna like I I'm, I had a natural ability, uh -huh. so all of a sudden I was getting good grades, which I never had. Yeah. Like I didn't have to. I had to work hard, but all of a sudden I was getting like 80s and 90s, yeah. and like shit. Like like my like the stuff that I was doing, I was just like, yo, like uh, it was a really interest. Like it really, I I I 
was like, oh, this is what it's like to be actually like good at academics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, you know, like I was just like good at school or whatever the fuck it is. Like I was just like, oh, like this is why people get addicted to being like reading books. Yeah. Or like because you you do have that like power. Yep. Like all of a sudden I was just like, um, getting good grades and I felt really good about it. I was showing up. My chef whites were always clean. My knives were always sharp. Yeah. And uh, and it was just really I liked it. Yeah. I liked uh, um, having that uh, control, those systems. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the chef would say something, and you'd just be like, "Yes, chef." Yeah, yeah. Like whatever the fuck you just said, yeah. yes, yeah. chef, yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. Um, and you have that kind of blind loyalty at yeah. first, yeah. and then it grows into real loyalty. Um, and I really liked that. Like I liked. Um, there's a lot of. I think negativity stuff about that like master servant type shit uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, where th there is that one kind of dic dictator style yep. shit yep. going on. Yep. But I think, um, I think I kind of needed it a little bit. Yeah. I think uh, everyone does. A I was bit. pretty, yeah. Like I think it was just like, it was, it was funny. Cause like I would go out, like I'd leave school and I would just like, I'm like one of those dudes who like, if I'm done a job, I'm done a job. Yeah. Like I don't really have too much sentiment about stuff. Yep. Um, and so I would just like, I'd leave school and then I'd go wild out and do whatever, go downtown and smash fucking beer bottles and like do all that stupid stuff. Yeah. But um, like when I was in school, I was like in school, I was present. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I loved cooking um, and I was getting good grades. So I was just like, yo, this is the sickest thing in the world to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I think it's so important not to be like preachy, but like to help. I think there's such a responsibility to help young people find that thing, right? It's that is the hard. It's the hardest thing in the world. I know, but that's such a make it, or break it, for people's lives. Like that's the thing that I think I'm like. Now that I have a kid, yep. I'm really like I really want to see what he's really into. Yeah, and see what Mac is really into, and just be like, yo. People don't need to learn like when was the last time somebody did long division? Oh, I hate when it. When was the last like I think school people don't even. It, it's funny, like uh, in schools, they don't even have um, kids don't even know how to do um, like read clocks mm -hmm. or anything because there's no such thing as clocks anymore. Mm -hmm. Everything's on your iPhone or whatever. Like things are changing, mm -hmm. but I think and, and schools are definitely changing, like where you could take your kid and be like, yeah, my kid's just going to like learn how to paint for yeah. like three years. Yeah. And he's like s fucking five years old. Yeah. And he goes, eh. and I think like <laughs> yeah. that's an amazing thing because I think people. At an early age, can figure out what the fuck they like. Either you're gonna be like an like, and this is kind of like a weird utopian, dystopian kind of whatever the fuck. Yeah. But like, either you're gonna be like a worker, you're gonna be in like like a smart person that yeah. can fucking read books and like make decisions, yeah. or you're gonna be a laborer, or you're gonna be like a creative. Yeah, but you can tell that pretty early, I think. Yeah. I think you can tell that at like 12 years old. Yeah, for sure. Well, you you know, like, dude, like, there's no way, like, I don't. I was horrible at school. Mm -hmm. I hated high school. I hated elementary school. Yeah. I was never like student of the month. I was never fucking, none of my family was, you know, like we were not people that loved school, but we were like really vibrant. Really. We had always like, we were really good with people, really good at making yeah. money, you know, yep. really good at selling drugs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like and that's really good gift, at like doing though. like, really, you know, like if my brother, my older brother, he was like, um, I really wish he stuck with it, but he was like a phenomenal gymnast. Really? Yeah, he was like a really like good flipping and flipping, and he would like be at a house party. He just turned it ah, upside down. We'd be at a that's house such party. A good party trick, dude. And he would just do like twenty back handsprings down a fucking yard, yeah. and then like punch a dude out for like bumping into him. <laughs> yeah. You know, like it was, he was just like one of those like psycho kids. Yeah. Like, but or like he was he was just like, yeah. He turned the gymnast thing into like jumping off of roofs, or he loved jumping out of cars. <laughs> He loved like jumping out of a car. He yeah. was like, dude, he was wild. So He's the good. best. So He'll never good. even hear this, so it doesn't matter. It's, yeah, it's he doesn't even have. He doesn't want. even have like a smartphone. <laughs> like that's what, like it's the best. He's he's sick. He's just smoking cigs and reading books, that's doing so construction. Cool. Uh, what? So then, did you go from what was next? Like, did you go from the from schooling to then you went and got a job at a? Yeah, well, I dropped. I dropped out two two weeks left in my program. Why? Uh, my buddies were going on tour across Canada. <laughs> like, and i was yeah. just like yo let's go it was like a kind of like a death metal band yep uh well, well yeah pretty much death metal band yep kind of like swedish death metal and um and they were like yo we're about to like drive across canada do you want to come with and i was like yeah fuck it i hate school and because it's weird like so this is a interesting i'll talk about this like once again my my punk brain <laughs> you know my fucking fuck you brain yep. 
was um, I don't need a piece of paper. I easily just I still got like I, um, I think it's really important to finish things now. Yeah. Uh, I think it really means a lot to finish something. Yeah. But to um, at that point in uh, 2002, um, I I definitely said fuck it, yep. and I had, uh, literally like two weeks left of my program. And I was like, yo, fuck this. I'm going on tour with fucking my buddy's band and I get to drink beer and sit in a van and have like, touring is, at that age was like the best thing because you have zero responsibility. Yeah, dream come true. You just get in the van with your dudes yep. and you fucking drive and it's the best thing ever. Absolutely. You're pissing in bottles. You're fucking stealing burritos. Dream like, come true. You can't, like, that is like, if anybody has a chance to do that, like drive across Canada or your own country with a bunch of buddies. Yeah. It's the I wish people best. would just do it because I did it when I was young because uh, it was real big and obviously skating, right? Yeah. So I went along on a skate trip to film and it was the same thing, like just around like the Ohio area, but it was the exact same experience. But I feel like unless you grow up in like the band world or the mm. skate world or, or a world that's built around touring, yeah, you, don't you don't really understand really, it. They don't even understand yeah. it. Like kids should just rent a van and just go Dude, drink beer and pee in bottles. It's the sickest. It is the fucking sickest. Yeah. Like, to do that is so freeing and so... Every cliche is real yeah. about it. Like, yeah. every cliche is sick. You go out there and you're just fucking... Grab a bag of smokes, yeah. you know? Stop off at a res, grab a bag of smokes. You got 200 smokes. Yeah. You're good for... You're set. <laughs> Dude, dry ass fucking... <laughs> Dude, it's so good. So I... did you... You never finished... No, I never finished uh, college. Got it. Yeah. But the trip was amazing. Dude, trip sick. Yeah. Still friends with all those dudes, you know? Yep. Um, I think, uh, but I'm really like, like I, you don't need, with in the cooking world, you definitely don't, no one's going to be like, uh, where's your uh, yeah. diploma? Yeah. Where's your fucking certificate? Where's your fucking whatever the fuck? Yeah. Can you cut an onion? Yeah. Can you show up on time? <laughs> yeah. I can show you the rest. Yep. Yeah. Do you have knives? Show the fuck up. I'll teach you. If you, it's sink or swim too, right? Like, yeah. So it's a, um, it's a funny industry. Yeah, it's a cool industry, man. I feel like it's why that's why it attracts so many like partiers and you know what I mean because it's something that you can do. Well, it's a it it, it it's a it's in it's it's intense. Yep. It's intense, so you really get into it. Yep. It's it, it's team oriented, you know. Yeah. Um, and I always loved team i love crew i love squad i love gang i love, I love you know friend group i love yeah. i love just homie you yeah. know like i love that yeah i love i love um being a part yeah you know maybe that's a flaw but i love that i think it and served you well yeah no well i love um i think it's it's good i think it's yeah. really good to be a part of things and be on the right side of things and to to find a bunch of like like-minded people and that push each other yep. right like yep. i think a lot of like i look at my <clears throat> friends that i've been friends with since the early 2000s mm -hmm. and a lot of them own their own businesses a lot of them are doing different things yeah. um and being successful on their own terms yep. and i think a lot of that comes from um at an early early very early age going to hardcore shows you learn about diy yeah. doing it yourself yep. Fuck everyone. Yeah. The biggest fuck you is to do it yourself and to control your shit and to fucking, yeah. you know, control your own shit. Yeah. Right? And I think um, a lot of my friends have, that come from the hardcore world um, have just been successful because of that foundation yeah. and, and obviously being good at what you do and finding that passion early on yeah. and, and fucking making moves. And, and that comes like... Yeah, I always think it's funny, like when people like. Um, there's a different kind of mentality from people that come from like the hardcore world. Yeah, I, I find or like yeah. the community and like, if, when you meet somebody, you're like, oh yeah, you kind of see them and you're like, yeah, they look like they listen to some tunes. And then if you talk to them for a few seconds and they talk about the real shit, yeah, then you you know you got like a brother for life. Yeah, that's how it is. Or a sister skating. for life. Like it really, um, it's an amazing thing. I yeah. think. I, I agree. don't know. What so then? What take me into like um, when you got into sort of working at a, your restaurant, like the the party days, the yeah, like, let's, uh, like my first job out of cooking school. So I got back from that tour, and I was like, okay, I need to work. I, I'm still like hiding that I didn't drop out of school. My parents yeah. are like, luckily, my parents were like out of the country when I had my graduation. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, <laughs> what a lucky yeah man. Um, 
And so um, I was I was really I handed out so many fucking resumes uh, back when you would hand out res you know yeah. walk around you walk into different restaurants and you just hand in resumes and you wait for chefs to call you I guess um, and and I walked into this one restaurant Le Select and uh, this woman Vicky was at the front and she's like I'll make sure she's like I like your smile I was you know. <laughs> That's amazing. I guess smiling, <laughs> and um, and she and I got a phone call from uh, the chef Brad, and Le Select. I didn't even really know because you couldn't really research things, really. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, back then you just had to kind of be like, oh, that restaurant looks cool. It's a French restaurant. I mm -hmm. wanted to work. I knew that I wanted to work in French, like a French bistro or something like that. Yeah. And um, and Le Select is like the most OG French bistro in Toronto. Uh -huh. Um. And it's been there for almost 40 years now. And, you know, I went and I worked there for about three years and really learned some shit. Yep. And uh, in that, that, those early days, like, you could still smoke cigs inside. Yeah. That's so crazy now it's to think wild. about. There's like, well, we had a smoking, it was funny, like, there was a smoking section. Yeah. And in the smoking section, there's, you know, next to the smoking section is not the smoking section yeah. but it's like you're just like one table on the left is smoking table on the right is non-smoking but if you have like 12 people smoking cigs it's like it's all the same yeah it's yeah. just smoking cigs but it's so funny like i thought about that the other day i was like man remember like it, it, the world it's it's moving fast man just like in that respect like if you smoke cigarettes in public you yeah. look like a piece of shit yeah now yeah like yeah. i just recently i i uh stopped smoking like over a month ago yep Congratulations. Yeah, it's, it's the one thing that I kind of, it is. Yeah. Like, it's the one, it's funny. Like, because I stopped smoking cigs yeah. for like three years. And then when I got when I got clean, I I started smoking yeah. again. I, yeah, <laughs> I know multiple people who, who, yeah. who have done that. There's just like, it was the one, it's the one <laughs> thing that you can kind of get away with. And it's the worst thing you can fucking do. Yeah. So now that I got a kid and shit, now I'm like, it finally sunk in where I'm like, okay, I got to quit. Fucking, I'm fat. I'm got a kid. I gotta stop smoking cigs. Yeah. Can't even get life insurance. Yeah. Fuck it. You know, like I'm just like, yeah. fuck. Yeah. No. Nah. Um, what? And then that culture was just, you were still partying super yeah, hard. Yeah. So, so at Le Select, it was very, um, you know, you do your shift, you work, you make a bunch of fucking, it was a very busy restaurant. Um, small team, like four to five cooks on the line. Yep. Uh, you'd cook fucking amazing French food for, you know, fucking 150, 250 people a night yep. and just smash. It was busy all the time. And you would work, you know, your 12, 12 hour shift. And as soon as you're done, you would fucking make a call, get a bag yeah. and drink pints after hours at that restaurant or go to an after hours every single night. Yep. Like it was just like instantly, like as soon as you got done, you're like, well, my, my scenario was always like, get a bag. Yeah. <laughs> get yeah, a fucking yeah. bag. Get the bell rings. Get, yeah. Bag. Get a ba bag. Bag, bag, <laughs> bag, bag, bag. And then do the bag, get another bag, get another bag, get another bag. Yeah. And just drink pints. Drink pints. A lot of pints. Yeah. A lot of pints. A lot of Jameson. A lot of fucking Jameson. A lot of bags. A lot of bags. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me ask you this too. Like, did you, like, you sort of gravitated to that type of hardcore partying? You just loved it, right? Like you just loved being around people, yeah. having fun. Like it wasn't like it didn't seem. I read a little bit of your, uh, of your story, and it's like it didn't come off as like sort of a darkness or like running no. from demons as much as like you just loved it. I uh, done a lot of soul searching. Yeah, what you find? Not a lot. Yeah. I'm a pretty happy guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's some shit, but nothing. Like <clears throat> I've never toiled with suicide yeah. i've never toiled like you know like i've never i've never been like a depressed dude yeah. um i've never i was just i was a good time charlie yeah. fucking party boy mm -hmm. i liked partying i like being around people i love you know fucking 5 a.m get that the, you know fourth bag yeah. telling everyone your fucking your secrets yeah just it was like real podcast shit yeah that's like real, real life podcast. yeah real yeah. podcast shit yeah being like, ah, oh, when I was in grade six, fucking good. My teacher told me I was an idiot, and then I like threw a desk. Oh, do you want to? You want to go camping tomorrow? <laughs> you want to fucking? Okay, let's go camping. And um, okay, my parents are gone. We can get their car. 
Ah, <laughs> oh, did you got cigs? Okay, let's go to the store and get cigs. Okay, did you? Where's the bet? <sighs> and you're just like such a just like OG podcast bullshit. I wish that was your podcast. That's gonna be my I, podcast. I wish you had a podcast. Where's the bag? It's called Maddie, Maddie in a bag. <laughs> no, I didn't. Couldn't talk. I used to do so much coke. Yeah, I would do so much coke that I couldn't even talk. Yeah, and so I'd just be like. And like anyone listening that knows me is gonna laugh because they know that I would just be like, <gasps> and like I was like a squeaker and a beeper, and like I would just be like, <laughs> and I have those little T Rex hands flailing around and fucking eating air burgers and fucking just sharpening your own teeth, man. Time of your life, dude. When, dude. No regrets, man. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> Dude, where'd shit's you, crazy. Where'd you go no, from? It's bad. I shouldn't be making it sound cool. It's not cool. Well, I Nothing mean... that sounds cool, actually. Anything that I just said. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, it is. I mean, it's cool. Like, it's fun. It's just, it's not sustainable. Dude, the coolest. Yeah, it's not sustainable. Like, yeah. the coolest thing, like, I was like, yo, if I had, like, if I woke up and there was, like, no bed sheets on, I got a fucking ashtray on my bed <laughs> fucking one sock on like i killed it yeah, that was the, that's, that was that's fucking at least you're in your bed dude yeah if i could yelp myself every night killed it <laughs> just fucking ace man what um, where did you go from that restaurant what was your next one? um so i worked at let select uh for about three years and from there i, w I became like a sous chef got it and <laughs> um we from there i left uh to go work at la palette okay. and la palette was this really small very bohemian very like different i didn't have to wear chef whites <clears throat> um it was it was definitely like the the owner would play like dead kennedy's yeah or shit like that like in the dining room or like fucking he loved <laughs> He loved like Go Go Bordello. And I don't like even that, know that is. It's like gypsy shit. <laughs> okay. It's like gypsy punk. Mm -hmm. And so, like, he'd be playing like gypsy punk and we'd be serving like cassoulet and all these like nice fucking, you know, bouillon bass and like classic French things. But like, we, we would serve horse. Yep. Um, Actual horse? Yeah, yeah. So Sounds that was like French. a, that's like a real French thing, like Cheval. Uh huh. So, yeah, like horse tenderloin, uh, horse tartare. Is it good? It's the best. Really? Yeah, yeah. I read about it in my book because I, I realized like it's a weird thing because in Canada, it's, it's still people freak a bit, yeah. But it's a it is kind of a, a thing, yeah. Uh, because we have that kind of European background, yeah. And especially in Quebec, like in Quebec, there is fucking like there's you can get horse, like and readily available. Not readily available, but you can definitely like buy horse yeah. if you wanted to, um, and eat it, and um, and I loved it. Yep. Um, it's very good. But in America, it's like fucking John Wayne shit. Yeah, and like you mentioned you mentioned eating fucking a horse. Sea biscuit. There's gonna be some shit out here. I know. You know, like every time I mention it, people are like, okay, <laughs> like right. that's the that's You're the not... gnarliest thing I talk about. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'll talk about fucking throwing a bunch of coke in my butthole, but fucking, I talk about like horse. some horse tartare, and everybody's like, I'm gonna shoot that motherfucker. <laughs> and I'm sure there's some fucking cowboys out there that are gonna shoot me. So let's go. Horses it's tasty. funny how that works. Yeah. It's funny how horse. It's like you literally. No, I get just it. Horses are man's best friend, or like they, you know. I get it. Yeah, but but they're tasty. You know, tomato, tomato, man. Yeah. Let's go. Um, what led to the like big awakening? Am I skipping too much of the story? No, to like, okay. So so La Palette was wild. Okay, La Palette was like less select, but even like more wild. Really? Yeah, that was like. <clears throat> Some real shit. It was in Kensington Market. Kensington Market was like this like little um, zone. Mm -hmm. All like little market, like farmer's markets, uh -huh. fucking weird sketchy bars. Yep. Once it got dark, it, would be, it became kind of this weird docile, like kind of junky vibe. Yeah. And there was this little bohemian, really special little French restaurant in the middle. Kind of on, on the north side of it, yep. at the top of the market. And and we used to just run rampant in that place. There was like a, a bar called Ronnie. Shout out to Ronnie's. I spent more time in that bar than like anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And some of my friends still work there, and I love them. And I love that bar so much. And um, and uh, we it was just like once I started working there, all of a sudden it was like I had like long hair. Then yeah. I wore a bandana. I like really was like this like weird folky thrash kind of vibe. Yeah. And I just like loved the market, and it was just like 
then there it was like there it was just like okay we're getting really into it yeah like there was like some shit like i had like really good friends that were drug dealers um i've always been friends with a lot of drug dealers but like really like it was just like popping mm -hmm. it was like it's another level. bag town yeah and like and i've mentioned this before and i i but like we used to do in the we used to love to, i used to i shouldn't say we um there's a few of us but i used to love doing i would take like coke uh -huh. ecstasy and ketamine and mix it all together like yeah. smash it up mix it all together call them like zombie lines and you do a fucking like big fucking railer that big gagger what happens like you fall out of your chair you giggle bro or it's just like you're just like toy like i don't know man doing that in the day in the park in the day oh yeah just being a yeah dog and what's it do like where you do that on your in? that's your day off that's like your day you got one day off a week yeah you, you're doing you hit zombie, the zombie lines, lines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was flight what is it where what space no. does that put you in like are you just like you're like uh, you're, you're up zombie, you're down yeah. well it's just like you're up you're down and then you're drinking like fucking just beers all day uh, there's this one beer um what is it delirium trummins it's like 13 percent beer mm -hmm. drink like four of those mm -hmm. and then like zombie dude life. you hit that and you're just cooked roasted <laughs> oh man okay so but that was like that was like la palette vibe so it was like very like it, right then and there, there was like a skate shop called A Drift was right across the street. Okay. So they used to do shows. There was all these skater kids. Like it was a very good vibe. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of kids, fucking a lot of kids running around the market. Yeah, yeah. And it was just kind of like a no man. There was never a lot of cops kind of in there for some reason. Yeah. And we could just run around. People were spray painting and like it was a very sick vibe mm -hmm. in the market in the early two thousands. And um, and then La, La Palette. Kind of, I was there for about two and a half years, uh -huh. um, and then because I only worked at two restaurants, and then I went and like opened restaurants. Yeah, that's crazy. So I only worked at two restaurants, and then um, Chris Taylor, uh, shout out to Chris Taylor, he was like this super gnarly, like kind of Samuel Beckett type motherfucker. Um, you go to his house, and his house is just full of art and like can like candles and Matus bottles, mm -hmm. and like just like had the sickest record collection real old school dude like rolled his own cigs or smoked like smoked like really gnarly weird european cigs yeah. he was just like the sickest dude yeah. and he hit me up and he was just like yo uh really good friend of mine is opening a restaurant they're looking for a chef do you want to go and do this and i was like okay and that's when i met brian and richard or sorry ugh, i shouldn't have said that brian and key yep. from castor yep. um and brian and key um you know, I went and met those dudes, and they had this restaurant called Odd Fellows that they were about to open, and they didn't have a chef. Uh -huh. and I went down there, and this restaurant was crazy. It was really small, skinny room, one table, a, a, this beautiful stone carved marble table uh -huh. that was twenty six seats. And I was like, "What is this?" And that was it. And that was it. Yeah. It was a, a two person bar in a long fucking table in a small ass kitchen, and they were like, "We want to do like Canadian food." We want to have like stews and venison burgers or whatever the fuck. We want to have Canadian food. Yeah. And um and I was like, okay. And I did, did I did I cooked for him like uh three nights in a row. That's crazy. Did like three different things and they're like, "Cool. You can cook. What's up?" All this while you're just partying your ass off? Yeah, I was like 26. Jesus. Right yeah, so I opened Oddfellows when I was 26. I just can't believe you were able to function like at that level and be doing zombie lines and stuff. Yeah, it was pretty normal. Yeah, that's cool. It would like and I'm not I'm not trying to like make like it was yeah, it was normal. Yeah, it was very normal to drink, you know, a case of beer, a bottle of whiskey, and uh, you know, a few bags of coke every day. Yeah, that's nuts. Okay, so you yeah. open the restaurant. Does it work right away? Yeah, it's a hit. It's twenty six seats, full every night. <laughs> yeah, <I> guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was great. Um, it was really good. And then that, you know, just uh, it was, it was like Brian and Key are designers. Yeah, they're like they make beautiful lights, furniture. And they had the space key on this building. They made the space. Um, key had a restaurant in there before that served Malay. He's from Malaysia. He has the beautiful little noodle shop kind of thing. Yep. They turned it into Odd Fellows, this beautiful fucking space. And uh, and then we were all, you know, I think it's just like every person I just met, we cl if if I clicked with you, yeah. it meant that we were like all psychos. Yeah. And so then Brian and Key are kind of. With, like they're a little older, you yeah, know. Yeah. They were like in their forties, yeah, and a little more put together. And I was still a psycho. And the turning point for me becoming a chef was definitely that. So, 
right when Oddfellows was about to open, uh -huh. like really close to opening, um, I went to them and I was like, hey, can we put off the opening for a month? My best friends are all, once again, <laughs> going on tour. Going on tour <laughs> and it's, it was like five bands going across Canada. And we were, it was like mega friend tour. Yeah. It was just like the most insane thing to me. Yeah. And, and Brian was like, we're going to open no matter what. I don't give – like Brian's a very cold cut dude. He's like, yeah. if you want to go be a fucking roadie or whatever the fuck you do <laughs> out on the road, go fucking do that. Mm -hmm. I'm opening up my restaurant. If you want to be the chef, you can be the chef. If not, go on tour. It's up to you. Yeah. Like whatever the fuck you want to do. So what you Brian's do? like this like sturdy, really intense guy sometimes. Yeah. And he was just like, whatever the fuck you want to do, man. And uh, and I was like, okay, well, I want to be a chef, so I'll stay. Oh, so and, failed. Yeah, so yeah. I didn't go on tour, and then that was the moment where I was just like, I'm going to be a chef. Like, I think it was the first time where it really clicked, where I was like, I'm going to be the chef. Yep. yep. And um, and then uh, and then we opened up Oddfellows, and uh, give Oddfellows a Google. We got some mixed reviews out there. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it was like really ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. It was you know almost ten years. It was the fuck. It was like ten years ago. This year it'll be ten years ago. Yeah. And that shit, if we opened Oddfellows now, it'd be fucking popping. Yeah. But we didn't know how to do things. Like, if I opened a restaurant now, like, I'm 10 years, I've been running restaurants for 10 years now. Yeah. I definitely, I've learned what not to fucking do now. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand what the fuck food cost is and what, like, real shit. Like, I understand how to run a restaurant. Yeah. Run, I, I, well, run a business. Yeah. And 10 years ago, I was doing fucking coke and running around like a psychopath mm -hmm. and, and, and playing chef. Yes. You know, I think it. I was just like, got I was it. good enough that I could just get by. Yeah. I was just good enough at cooking that I could just get by and fake it and lie and steal and make myself seem like I was important to, yeah. to, to the owners of the restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. But it worked. I mean, at, at yeah. that time. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm still friends with some of them. <laughs> um, so then you're still partying. Yeah. Still Odd Fellows was still partying. Um, and then these two dudes, Jesse and Richard, who owned this like really kind of street level crispy ass nightclub yep down the street called the social um they came to us and we're they used to hang out at odd fellows and they're like why don't we do something like big and crazy because odd fellows was 26 seats yeah. and brian and key make beautiful fucking rooms yeah and and then we we're like okay and then brian like the business plan was take odd fellows which was already fucking crazy it was a fucking crazy place yeah and we we're like odd fellows on acid okay crazy meaning decor no, no, because the decor is sick. Yeah, vibe, just vibe. We're gonna fucking play. You're gonna walk in, and we're gonna be playing like Pantera as loud as possible, or playing Nirvana, or playing you know Sonic Youth, or playing like playing really loud music. Yeah, and this is like once again, like this is like eight years ago now when we opened Parts and Labor, and like our reviews for that was just like, what the fuck is this place? <laughs> How many seats? Like 136. Jesus, and so it was like communal real... dining, so it was like eight large 12 person tables we had three chefs tables in the back yeah. we had tables up front then we had a bar in the basement called the shop which is like about 175 cap room no windows fucking sick like diplos played there fucking really yeah like it, it's really some i just not to name drop fucking diplo like a loser but <laughs> the, the fucking like shit like that would happen yeah, yeah yeah like people would roll into town be like yo i heard about this spot like come and check it out and then like all of a sudden and because they owned a nightclub too called the Hoxton in Toronto. Okay. So like everyone would roll through and play that. Like um all the mad decent dudes. Yeah. Because their their partner at, at um the club was Embrace. Uh -huh. So a big production company. Okay. So then like all the heads would come down to the restaurant. And it was a very great like it, it it what we we were successful in our minds. Yeah. Because we did what we wanted to do. Because we opened vibes. Like it, it's, it's stupid. Like we wanted we want to create a space. Yeah. Like we don't want to open up restaurant. We don't want to open up. Oh, we're gonna. I'm gonna do a French brasserie, mm -hmm. or I'm gonna open up a Spanish tapas joint. It's yeah. like no. I'm opening up parts and labor. Yeah. I'm opening up. This is parts and labor. Yeah. It's like what is it? It's parts and labor. Yeah. What kind of food do you serve? I serve, um, you know, food. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I serve feel food. Like. Yeah. And these are chairs and tables, and come in and enjoy yourself. Yeah. And it's just like I think like that's what, and I love that about the dudes that I used to roll with. And uh, but I feel like that's the magic part, right? Like that's the part that's hard to like sort of like you can dis once you learn business, you can run the business, right? You can yeah, hire well, we didn't we to... weren't running the business right. Yeah, that's no, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have opened and closed restaurants with these dudes now. Yeah. And now I'm no longer even with them. I've I've left. Yeah. Uh, but they're still my friends and I love them. Um, but you know, you know, the biz the business side of things sometimes is 
Like we were all partying at yeah. the beginning, yeah. and we really we I think we we dialed it in now. I think they got it dialed in now for sure. Yeah, um, they're they're doing well and everything. They just opened up a crazy like another sport. Like they got two sports bars in Toronto. Still, yeah, right? yeah. It, Richard Richard and Jesse do a great job at doing that. Brian and Key, you know, they're doing they they, they they're focusing way more on their design stuff. Yeah, uh, which they're fucking brilliant at. And we we just had we had an insane time for two years. Yeah. Parts of, the first two years of parts and labor was fucking mental. Yeah. I've never we took every like because we had a big space. So parts and labor would cook and we would have a big party every single night. We'd have a big party. Yeah. And then everyone would leave at like two thirty, and then we would put like 40, 50 people down in the basement, lock all the fucking doors, yeah. stay there till like seven a.m. every day. And we just bring out cases of beer and just chill with our homies That's every so single good. night. And that was wild. What a fun run. That's an incredibly fun like 10 years. Dude, if I could, I, I it's funny because it's like, I remember what I remember. Yeah. And then you hear stories of like some shit that's gone down yeah. and stuff like that. And you're like, oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Like there's times where I'm like, I've been like, Ugh. Yeah, like on one of my birthdays, I'll say I've never said I. I'll talk about this. Yeah, one time on my birthday, like this is how crazy it was. Yep. we were outside of my restaurant at six o'clock, and yeah. we were having a my birthday. I used to have birthday. Six p.m. Or... Yeah, it's okay. like six p.m. Okay. Like it's bright out, mm -hmm. and we're outside having some smokes, and we're fucking wasted. And it's like during my I used to have these things called Maddie Fest, which was like three day yeah, parties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Literally, I'm standing out front, and then Riche, like Brian from Castor, he's like, yo, Kung Fu. So Kung Fu is like my sous chef. Kung Fu is like my homie from La Palette days. He's been with me for a long time. And we're just like fucking brothers. Yeah. And, and, and somehow it's just like, Brian's like, why don't you piss in his pocket? And I'm like, yeah, Kung Fu, piss in my pocket, dude. Piss right here in my pocket. Kung Fu just pulls out his dick and like pisses in my pocket. At 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. outside of our restaurant. <laughs> like, that's the kind of stuff that we were, like, yeah. like I've never told that pub story publicly, but it's so fucking funny. Because I'm like, that's what, we were truly unruly. Yeah. Like, we didn't give a fuck. Yeah. We weren't hurting nobody. Like, we weren't, like, fucking, we, we may sound a little bro -y, but, like, we weren't bros. Yeah. Like, we yeah. were just us. We were kids that fucking lived life like fucking dummies. Yeah. yeah. And we weren't trying to hurt anybody. And we were just having the fucking best time of our lives. We thought that was funny as fuck. And then all of a sudden I realized I'm fucking covered in piss. <laughs> and my buddy's it pissing all over me. Pocket. Yeah, and it's just like stuff like that. Like as simple as that may sound. Or yeah. not as simple. But to me, I'm like, yeah, that okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Like that that that's a funny, that's a fucking funny story. Yeah. Maybe some people think I'm an idiot, but I'm like, yo. What was the, like is that the kind of life you're living? You're you're so conservative or like whatever. Yeah. Like yo, that's my best friend. Piss in my pocket. That's sick. <laughs> yeah. I think that's sick. I agree. I you know, like I'm just like, I but agree. I come from that world where that yeah. stuff is very romantic to me. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. just being able to live that way <laughs> yep. and to have no um, no boundaries like that. Do you where, still have where, any element of that in your life now? Dude, I'm at home. I'm at home taking care of my kid. Does you have your baby? Wife. Does your baby pee in your pocket like from time to time? No, Mac. The old days. It'll, no. <laughs> like, I'm trying to Mac, keep him kind of normal. Come here, Mac. Dude, let me show you what dad used. To I don't do. need Mac to be totally feral <laughs> like daddy. But uh, <laughs> no, I think um, I want Mac to be his own dude yeah. for sure. Like yeah. I want him. To, I'll I'll try to do what I want him to make good decisions. Obviously, and and. Um, I'm not one of those guys who's like he. he want, yeah, I was such a crazy. Boy. I want him to be a fucking doctor. Yeah. Like, I'm still gonna be like, yo, if go live your life. You want to yeah. go to Amsterdam and do some shit and yeah. do whatever the fuck you want to yeah. do. Like you're gonna have to do that. But there's gonna be repercussions if you turn into a fucking loser. Yeah. <laughs> if you turn into a loser, you will be a fucking loser. <laughs> yeah. And you will fucking see what that looks like. Yeah. And it doesn't fucking look cool to me. Why do you think you didn't become a loser? Because I don't want to be a fucking loser. And you never did. No. Yeah. I ain't, I'm that fucking aware. Yeah. I'm but that never, aware that I'm never, never going like... to be a fucking, I, you'd never go full dummy, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, it's is, true. Is it, and, and to me, what I was doing was not full dummy. Yep. I and, agree. And the fact that you're still opening restaurants and, and the head chef of these restaurants, that's insane to me. Bro, I'm about to open up the best restaurant in Canada, in Toronto, like. Dude, yeah. I I'm just getting started. But I mean, not now. Stuff. Now it doesn't surprise me. I mean, through that whole process, like the fact that you didn't have two years where you're like, yeah, I pretty much just did literally nothing. Yeah, no. You know, I, like you always were moving forward in the dude, progression. You know what I mean? I haven't stopped. Yeah. Did you ever get uh, any like ever get arrested or anything like crazy like that? Uh, yeah. 
Anything you want to share? Um, yeah, I've only been arrested in high school. Yeah, we were at semi formal at a hotel party. Mm -hmm. Uh, big party, people getting kicked out, people scrapping, get everyone getting kicked out of the hotel. Yeah, um, it was winter semi formal, so uh, we were trying to get my brother's jacket out of a car. Okay, cops were telling everyone we're trespassing, get the fuck out of here. My brother's like, yo, our parents are on the way to pick us up. It was in like Niagara Falls. Yep. And um and uh and the cop was just pushing my brother and and then my brother's like, yo, let me just that's my car. I'm not being crazy. Yeah. Like, let me just get my jacket. It's snowing out. It's fucking three AM. And um and the cop just kept he like cuffed him, like an open hand cuff in the face. And then we we're like, whoa, we're a bunch of like white kids from Canada. We're like, whoa, excuse me. You can't do like, that. You can't do that. What's your badge number? <laughs> yeah. You know, pulling that shit. Yeah. And um, and then he decked my brother. And then my brother fucking knocked him out. <laughs> and then we started fighting cops. <laughs> and shit went sideways yeah. real quick. Yeah. And I um, could see that. And then that we got pepper sprayed. We got beat down. We got worked pretty hard. Yeah. Um, and we went to court we got we got actually like i think like two early retirements out of some police officers really yeah and uh which is whatever they're probably on their pension doing whatever the fuck they're doing of course and uh they worked my bro hard yeah yeah they fucked him up it was pretty good though but so you guys didn't get you didn't get any crazy uh charges or anything no we got everything we went to court man yeah. we had we had half the school was there watching it yeah you're right you you have that many kids um you know yeah and uh it's a different story in canada than here in the states and uh it's uh for some reason the ju ju judicial system kind of came out not, not in our favor because it's not like we got money and we weren't trying to get money we were yeah. just trying to get these cops off the streets yep. these cops were like vicious malicious fucking pieces of shit like most worked. like you know most cops in my yeah. family you know i'm always like i'm down for saying you know, FTP, <laughs> fuck the police, AC, yeah. AB, and I hate fucking cops. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, my grandfather was chief of police. Really? For fucking like 17 years of Fredericton. And my, my dad's dad, my, that's my mom's dad. And my, my mom's, my dad's dad uh, was a Mountie. Uh -huh. um, so they're both like, and both served in the, both served in like the Korean War. Yeah. Um, you know very yeah. admirable people yeah uh i never heard them both speak about work ever yeah. uh both loving caring people um and uh you know it but yo until cops are going to jail for murder yeah, yeah. fuck them yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 yeah. straight up yeah like and that i'm just like people are like how can you because i've said this kind of stuff before people are like isn't your grandfather was a police officer i'm like yeah he was he wasn't a murderer but until <laughs> but until fucking cops you yeah. kill somebody you kill a fucking kid yeah you fucking get the fuck out of here mm -hmm. you're going to jail for the rest of your life you piece of shit yeah your job is to serve and protect like not like it i'm just like no, I'm some white kid here saying this shit but it's just like um it's brutal they're better it, about it, that it, in canada? It, it's huh they're better about that in canada yeah it's just there's not yeah no <laughs> Well, I mean, it's just least, a different. It's such a different. Yeah, at thing. least paying the price. I think for, there's I mean, pieces of shit cops everywhere. Like people getting beat down everywhere. <laughs> but it, but and but like um, like there was a case in Toronto. Some kid was, uh, you know, some immigrant kid was all fucked up on drugs on a streetcar. Pulled like a jack knife. Yeah. Like some small ass knife. Yeah. He got shot like nine times, and that cop is going to jail. You he know? died. The kid died. They had the full video, everything, and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He died. Um, and this, so I think there's some stuff like that, but it's still so wild. I'm not even saying that it doesn't happen. I'm saying that you you get punished for it properly. More yes and no. Like I don't know. I'm yeah. not a political motherfucker, but I just think it's just like yo. Until until it's yeah. like treated like yo. Yeah. Dismiss the fact that you're a cop. You made a bad decision. You got a gun. You have power. Yeah. You have a licensed firearm, and you kill somebody that didn't need to die. Yeah. You need to go to jail. Agreed straight up straight up anyway. so you but that, that was the only time that i've ever been i i was um i was in jail for about 24 hours in a cell pepper sprayed the fuck like they were like at one point i was being held by two cops some guy was like just reef punching me in the f like my arms were being held i was being just like punched in the face by one cop and then they were holding my mouth open and pepper spraying me down my mouth and then they came and like I was like handcuffed in the back of the cruiser, and then the one cop would just come and like pepper spray me every like ten minutes, just, to just like lace me. <laughs> and then they were like came and they're like, 
It was crazy. Like when I was back there, one cop came and he's like, yo, we fucking killed your brother. They told me they killed him. And I was just like, no, he did. He's right over there. I was like, you're fucking, you think I can't see because all this pepper spray? I was like, that's my brother right over there, that car. Get the fuck out of here. He can't see out of his eyes. Yeah, but I was just like, dude, alive. my brother ain't dead, you fuck. <laughs> yeah. What pieces of shit, Yeah, man. they're all fucked up. Fuck uh, cops. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I. But that, that's like my little story. Like, you know, I have one stupid little yeah. story. That's what's um, cool. I'm more fascinated by you had all these years of doing all this stuff, but you never like, it never affected, it never, you never hurt anyone. You never, whatever, like you never even had, like no. you never even got arrested, like through that whole process, really. No, I like, um, yeah, no. It's cool. Yeah. Tell me about the health scare. The health scare. Um, Am I skipping? No, okay. no, that's chill. Like, so we opened Parts and Labor, mm-hmm. uh, two years into Parts and Labor, finally... I think all this shit adds up. Yeah. Uh, How old are you? I was 29. Okay. So I was 29, and uh, it was kind of wild. Like, it was kind of at the end of it. It was pretty fucking, you know, it was pretty wild at the end. And, um, you know, me and Trish weren't doing good. There was some serious shit. I Mm -hmm. I was turning into a little bit of a... I it it was the pendulum was swinging mm-hmm. to becoming a loser. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was it was definitely swinging. I was I was stealing money from the restaurant. Yep. I was um, doing whatever I needed to do to survive yep. in this mess I made. And after about a three day binge, I um, I wo- I crashed after like Saturday night service. Didn't sleep like all weekend. Crash went to bed, woke up, and um, and just thought I woke up around like six a.m. and I was with Trish, and I was just like, "Yo, I think I'm." I was just like, "Something's happening. Yeah. Something's fucking happening." Yeah. And um, and I just was just like, my arm's not numb, but there's this uncompromising squeezing of my heart going on. Uh-huh. And I was like, "This is fucked up." I've had heart palpitations yeah. and like just partying that much. I used to always put my hands over my head and like cough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of try to try set to my heart. It. Yeah. <laughs> set your heart back just, to. Yeah, whatever. Like I used to do all these stupid things. <laughs> yeah. um, never once thinking I could just stop doing drugs. Yeah. Um, and then, um, and then really I just, I went, uh, we went to the hospital. And when you, when you have a heart attack, your uh, enzymes change in your blood. Okay. So they took my blood right away. I walked into the hospital. I was like, yo, I think I'm having a heart attack. Uh, and they're like, do you, and I was just like, yes to everything. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, let's go. Like, fucking, I think I'm having a fucking heart attack. Yeah. Um, Cause then you start, as soon as you think you're having a heart attack, all of a sudden you think you're having a fucking yeah, heart attack. Absolutely. And so I was a little stressed. I'm never really a stressed dude. And I guess um, they took my blood and then they're like, yo, you had a heart attack about four hours ago. And I was like, what? So I was like, while you were asleep? Yeah. So I had a heart attack in my sleep. And, and they're like, you're really lucky that you're fucking alive. And they're like, we need to keep you until your enzymes go back to normal and we need to watch over you for the next couple of days. So then I had to, they didn't have any beds ready. So I had to lay in fucking ER around all the hectic, crazy shit yeah. where I was just like, okay, so I'm safe. So I was kind of chilled because I was like, okay, I'm chill. Yeah. I had my heart attack. I'm still alive. But now I got to lay in this fucking bed with all these fucking monitors and everything. Um, and, and all of a sudden I started having my buddies showing up. <laughs> <laughs> and like I called my parents dude I just had buddies I got a photo of all this shit where I got all these things hooked up I got like Ray-Bans on and I swear to God that I have a photo because I think I had a bag in my pants when I went to the hospital <laughs> yeah. I, I swear there's one photo that I got where I'm holding like a bag of coke <laughs> and with sunglasses on but the guy I took the I don't talk to the dude I took the photo with anymore yeah. but um, yeah that was a that was a wild time like I it was so funny like I was I was um, I remember there was a time i was probably in the in the er for a few hours and all of a sudden everyone kind of left and i was by myself and I, for some reason i started listening to like sigur ross uh-huh. just like real vibey tunes yeah. and i just like kind of cried a bit yeah and um i mean you almost definitely died. not a crier yeah like i'm um for being a happy emotional kind of guy yeah. i'm definitely not a crier yeah like i'm always like like didn't cry when my child was born yeah. didn't cry like i'm just like not one of those like it's weird. But now that my kid's here, I'm a crier. Yeah. It's a very weird thing. Like, the body is a, and the mind is a crazy fucking thing. Yeah. 
Um, but I just had like a weird. I sat there and I just was sort of thinking about some stuff. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, you know, and then all of a sudden, just a few short months later, I thought I was invincible again. Yeah. yeah. So and that's what happened. You got out. You're like, I all right, well, out, obviously, I'm cleaning up my. I life. went to back to work. I went to back to work within ten days. Yep. You were uh, like, I'm sober now. No, uh, yeah, like, I, did you... I, I didn't do the rooms. I didn't do like any programs or anything like that. I was just like, okay, I, I guess I'm just uh, not gonna do any of this shit anymore. Yeah. Um, and that lasted a few weeks, mm-hmm. and then I was like, okay, I'm not gonna drink whiskey. I'm just gonna drink beer. Yeah. I'm not gonna. Um, I'm not gonna do any coke. I'm not gonna smoke cigarettes. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna do that. Mm-hmm. And I just started lining up all these things. Yeah. And I just started doing everything more. Because now and you so, think nothing can kill me. Yeah. Like, then all of a sudden I grew this superman There's two things I have. I grew this crazy ego where I was like, I'm indestructible. Yeah. Like 50 Because there's a little bit of that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Shot me. nine times. <laughs> I had a heart attack in my sleep and with, under a really nice duvet. <laughs> you know? Just real chill. And, um, and, and when I started doing drugs, which I never did before, yeah. every single time I did a fucking bump or a rail coke or did something chemical. I had to say, fuck it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I knew, like, I was still, I'm still, like, this aware guy where I'm, like, not a complete dummy. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, like, this good time fucking dude, but I was still kind of crushed. And I had to be, like, fuck it. And then all of a sudden, I started turning into a negative dude, and I started really blacking out. Really? And by the end of it, my drink was a pint filled with ice, filled with vodka and lime. So I was just drinking vodka. Yeah. Just like I turned into like a full alcoholic. Like I was just drinking vodka because I just wanted to get drunk. Yep. I didn't want to, I wasn't drinking to have fun anymore. I was drinking to fucking kill th- this kill. Yeah. Me yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I didn't know. I lost complete control. Yeah. I started lying really bad to Trisha, my wife. I started lying to friends. Um, you know, I, I, like a lot of my friends were drug dealers, so I got cut off by everyone because everyone was like, "I'm not selling fucking Maddie Coke. Yeah. Fuck you, man. I'm not having your death on me." Yeah. And so then all of a sudden, I would I'd start going to sketchy spots where I'd go to bars where nobody knew me, and I started like doing really shitty stuff. Yeah. And then that's when, um, you know, uh, Richard threw together a um, like an intervention. Yeah. And, and they literally sat you down and said, like, look, I man. got sat down. I got sat down and I list, I was done. I, I I was like at the point where I was I was so tired. Yeah. 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 I was so tired of lying, so tired of this weird like when I when I got clean, I wrote out this crazy chart of every single dollar I owed uh-huh. to people. Uh-huh. And I kept it in our bedroom. And my wife hated it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I owe all these people money. I need to pay back all of this money. Yeah. I need to do this right away because I'm going to forget. And then all of these people are going to fucking hate me. Yeah. And and I just, I, I, I really, like, after that intervention, I really, um, it was really easy. I was, I was spiritually broken. I was fucking tired. I was, um, I was ready to live another life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Once again, you know. Like, yeah. I could have said, fuck you. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny I, how it just, you have to come to it on your own. That's yeah. what's so funny about it. You know, yeah, like, you can't, you can't help. Like, you can't crazy. help. The ego is a wild, <laughs> wild, wild motherfucker. It's so true. And and no one can tell you anything. But if you, I was right, I was, like, the intervention was just a thing. Like, that's great. Yeah. And I love those dudes. Every guy in that room, like, I even, like, have, like, I don't talk to one of the guys in that room right now. Yep. And he's one of my oldest friends, and I love him. To death. Yep. Still. Yep. We just, we're not talking. Yep. And, um, but I love every single guy that was in that room. Yeah. And, and I listened. And, um, yeah, it was just like, I, I would have had the next day, if I didn't do what I did, I, w- I w- would be dead. For sure. Yeah. Like, I would have okay. lost, you know, lost the girl. I've been with Trish since high school. Mm-hmm. Lost Trish. Lost restaurants. No more identity because I don't got nothing. Yeah. And I would have just went full fucking full dummy. Yeah, yeah. Full dummy. Yeah. And I wouldn't have lasted. I, I you know, I would have OD'd again or had another heart attack or done something and I would have just not had that chance. Yeah, yeah. When did you start doing, 
like content and videos and I was doing content. I had a show that you can watch on YouTube yep. called Hangover Cures. Yeah, that so was wow. That was that after the heart attack. Yeah, yeah. In the second round. Yeah, of that's partying. the second round. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that that the, that show is like second round shit. Yep. So I was still getting fucked up. Um, and then when that happened, my, the, one of the first things I did, I I, I remember I called um, Chris Grosso, who was my exec, and Lauren Cinnamon, those mm -hmm. two producers. They Lauren still produces my shit. Mm -hmm. Now Chris does um, other people's shows. Um, but I called them and I was just like, hey, I just want you to know. Um, uh, I, I want to make stuff still. Yeah. I don't know what it's going to be. Yeah. But I would love the opportunity to continue to work with Vice and to do stuff and to build content. Um, but I just I can't do this drinking show anymore. Yeah. Um, I just can't do it. And they were both so supportive. And they're just like, dude, take the time. You're funny. Yeah. And because in my head, I'm like, that was my identity. My yeah. identity was so wrapped around being this psychopath and chefs coming from other parts of the country or parts of um, the world. And I would always entertain. And like every time a chef would come, I'd be like, come to my restaurant. Let's fucking party. Yeah. Chef, like it's just such a weird Viking mentality of yeah. destroying and pillaging yourself. Yeah. It's a very weird thing because the tables turn, right? Like it's um, like. Pff, our job is to take care of other people. And then we ain't taking care of ourselves. Yeah. And we're just there fucking doing drugs and drinking. And we really lose sight of like, um, it's it, it's like I find like my buddy's a, like not a personal trainer. He, he, he works with people mm -hmm. in a very amazing way. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gives himself so much to other people that sometimes he forgets to take care of himself. Yep. And mentally, physically. And I think a lot of the chefs do that as well. And a lot of people in the restaurant business were so focused on taking care of all of these people so much yeah. that we really lose sight on um, taking care of ourselves. And I think that's a really big conversation now in the like um, chef and hospitality industry. Is that it's like, how do we, how do we take care of ourselves? How do like, do we change the work week? Do, why do we have to work fucking 12 hours a fucking day, yeah. 14 hours a day, 15 hours a day, 16 hours a day. Yeah. What are we doing to fucking, Give somebody a plate of food that they're not even going to be happy about, that yeah. they're fucking going to bitch about the price. Yeah, yeah. You know? Is that happening? That's something that's happening in that industry? I think there's definitely, um, it's starting. Mm -hmm. it, it's amazing. Yeah. Like when I'm opening up my new restaurant and like a, the bigger, the big conversations are, um, you know, having equal, like I want to have for every uh, manager, I want to have a male and female, yeah. you know, yeah. a man and a woman. Yeah. Um, I want to have anyone in a decision-making position to be equal, you know, yep. male, yep. Um, man and woman. Yep. I want to have, um, you know, how do we make a 10-hour workday in a kitchen, mm -hmm. which is real chill. Like a 10-hour straight day is fucking amazing. Yeah. How do yeah. we how do we create that? Yeah. Um, and how do we make, you know, a culture that um, really inspires and builds people up rather than like, um, making them afraid, making them fucking turn into fucking psycho dudes that want to grab <laughs> chicks boobs. Yeah. Be a piece of shit. Yeah. Like fuck that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. What um when you did that first show, does that just vice like online? They were just posting it on what was that before? Yeah, it was show? just online. Like I did the burger video and then um I think I did the burger video, then the pancake video, then we did hangover cures, and then I was like, okay, I can't drink anymore. And then we just blew it out. We started doing like all the how to videos, yep. uh Keep It Canada, um, which is I think there's only six episodes of Keep It Canada yep. online. And then and then when Viceland came around, they're like, yo, do you wanna what what do you what are you thinking for a show on Viceland? Yeah. And I was like, yo, why don't we do the show called like Dead Sound on Life? Um, whatever. Let's travel around, meet some motherfuckers, and do some shit. And how then, do you how do you like doing that? Like traveling all around and I'm uh, like it's bittersweet that I'm not making it right now, but um, I definitely traveling for work quickly becomes traveling for work. Yeah, yeah. Being yeah, alone yeah, yeah. on a fucking airplane, being yeah. alone in an airport, being alone in your fucking apartment or Airbnb or hotel or wherever the fuck you are. Yeah. And then you go out and you have to perform and get uh, and, and be there and yeah. do that shit. And then you're just like, and another thing too, it's like, I don't think the world needs another white guy traveling the fucking world <laughs> trying to identify with different cultures. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I think I'm like I'm. There's an, hot, there's there's another person that can wear that hat. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I think I'm good. Yeah. Like I just I I really love making it supper time. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. What do you do on that? 
just cook, man. I just wanted my goal was to make the funniest cooking show. Yep. That's it. Yep. Like yep. simple fucking open a can of beans, man. Yeah. Like yeah, let's yeah, let's yeah, yeah. make a cooking show that people will cook. Yep. And or, you can do that without traveling. You do that all from Dude, I see my kid in the morning and at night when I'm shooting. Yeah, it's so it's good. fucking sick. Yeah. I can be home and make dinner or have dinner with my wife and kid and have the mornings with them. That is real cool to me. Where do you live now? I just live, I live in Parkdale. In Toronto? Yeah. Got it. Um, and then what? So then you're opening a new restaurant also? Yeah. Opening a new restaurant in Toronto. Hopefully, uh, you know, 2018, winter, winter, two, yep. like in a year. Yep. Yep. Or, <laughs> yeah. 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 Ish. Less than a year. Yep. Yeah. I'm building, it's a hole in the ground right now. We're putting in the foundation. Like we're building a building, then a restaurant. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Oh, you're building the whole thing. Yeah, we're building a building, yeah. Wow. Um, what do you think is next? Like, what do, where do you go from here? Like, I mean, <laughs> I'm in LA doing a podcast, yeah. man. I always, this was it. When I was at Cooking School, I was like, I'm going to be doing podcasts in LA, in Los Angeles, in tall buildings. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's just, um, just keep making stuff that I want to make. And everything that comes from the sides comes from the sides, and we see what's really yeah. cooking, and and we get to choose. I'm not trying to be the biggest thing in the world. But are you gonna have like I'm pans and uh, custom uh, spatulas, and like are you gonna? Am do I gonna that? have pans, pots and pans? Yo, if anyone out there's got some pots and pans, call your boy. <laughs> you need a licensing deal. I need a licensing deal. You don't do deal. any of that stuff yet. You don't no, have like Maddie's I don't, dude. Spices? I ain't got none of that shit. No, that's coming. Yeah, That's Maddie ketchup. Coming. I don't think the world needs Maddie's ketchup. Uh, Maddie's, Maddie's but coming. I think all that stuff is kind of whack. Yeah. So it's like a very, it's a very, um, it's a double-edged sword, yep. that shit. Yep, it sure is. So I, I, I just want to, I don't know if people really, I don't know if brands want to align themselves with somebody like me. I think they do. Um, I think we'll the see. new. I think the new, I think the vice thing, not to like, I'm just saying the realness yeah. is like the new thing, right? Like it's what all I these think big brands wish they since had. Since this show has come out, I will say this. Uh -huh. My social media has blown up with people being like, my husband's cooking in the kitchen. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, that's a niche of yours. And, dude, people are, like, it's happening. Yeah. People are cooking. Yeah. And that is what's fucking really good. And I love that. That's what I was just like, yo, if people cook, yeah, people need to know how to cook. My brothers eat cereal because they don't know how to fucking cook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't <laughs> want people. It's really easy to cook. Yeah. And it, the more you do it, you get really good at it. You can be making really good meals. Yeah. And cooking for each other. Cooking sick. Don't go out doing coke and zombie lines and being a goof. Cook at home. <laughs> cook. You know, like I just like that's the thing that I think is like, uh, you know, I think cook. You need food. Yeah. Why don't you eat? Like I hate people being like, I make a grilled cheese and I make, a, I got a stir fry. I got this one stir fry that I fucking make, and it's uh, yeah, it's got beef and broth. And you're like, you got two. You're trying to tell me you got two things you know how to cook. Yeah, you're fucking tripping. Would you say that's like kind of your mission statement a little bit? Is like getting people to cook? One hundred percent. Yeah, that's what I say. Every, I just, dude, I want people to cook. Yeah. If 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 people cook and learn how to cook. You will grow of self. You will. It is instant gratification. Yeah. You take time because it's it, it, it's such a rewarding thing. It takes time. You have to go out and shop. Then you come home. You have to prep it. You have to get it ready. You have to wash it. You have to fucking clean it. You have to prep it. Do all that bullshit. Then you cook it. And then you sit down and you're like, oh, fuck. I just did this it. thing. Yeah. It's very good for the soul. Yeah. To, to, and it's like, and you could do it once a week. Mm -hmm. if, if if people could cook once a week for themselves and for people that they know or homies or fucking loved ones or whatever yeah that shit's good cook for your mom yeah let me cook ask you this dad. if like, i'm sitting at home listening to this right now and um and i've never cooked a day in my life i'm also describing myself um where do i what what do i do and i'm like you know what i'm fired up i love maddie i want to do like what do i do to to cook my first meal whatever you want like i think um like where do i go do i go on youtube how do I learn? I think YouTube, I go on fucking YouTube. Yeah, okay. I'm like, yo, how do I make this? Yeah. And I'm just like, I go on fucking YouTube because yeah. there is a video for everything. Yeah, it there is crazy. Is, man. There There's is. so much content. Yep. And um, I just think that it is an amazing thing that people, you can learn everything from YouTube, man. YouTube's so sick. It's, so, it's like an instruction manual for anything. Yeah. Like, it's just like an interesting thing that everyone has a platform. Um, and I think, uh, 
Yo, just learn. Like, I think, you know, people need a good pan, a good knife. People need, yeah. like, a few certain things that uh, will make things a lot easier. But once again, I always get spooked because I'm always like, yo, get, go get a good knife. And then a good knife is sharp. And then yeah. people that don't know how to handle a real knife, yeah. it's fucking dangerous. Yeah. And so it's just like, I always get spooked on that kind of stuff. And I do some stuff on the show because I'm on the show we have like small dog, medium dog, big dog uh-huh. stuff. So it's like three levels of cooking. Of like skill set? Yeah. Okay. So each episode is like based on a skill set. Got it. So the first episode is a small dog. It's just like spaghetti and meatballs. I'll show you how to make like a, at the end of the show, I even call I'm like, this is a perfectly mediocre Caesar salad. <laughs> yeah. But that's, yo, you yeah. got to make that first. Yeah. So then you know how to make a fucking baller one one day. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's no reason that like people should be showing, it's not about like, um, like 30 minute meals or whatever, this kind of stuff. It's just like, yo, just make it accessible. And the way that I talk, I think a lot of people are just like, oh, I understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I think I just talk in a way that people kind of can uh, vibe on it and be like, yo, I'm going to cook this fucking thing. Yeah. You know how many times I feel like my DM, like I get, it's like, it's crazy. I get like hundreds of DMs a day. Uh-huh. And people just being like, I made your lasagna, I made your eggplant parm, I made the salad. How do I make this fucking fennel salad? How do I do this? What do I do? And I try to answer some, but it's pretty wild now. But it's, um, people are cooking. Yeah. And that's just like, it's sick. That's a good feeling. Dude, I'm like. Having that impact, you know? Man, it is as cliche Yeah. As but here's it is. what I've learned. What I think I've learned is like, and what I'm trying to do on my stuff is like, I've learned sort of the things that affected my life or changed my life. And when you try to pass that on and you see it working, yeah. that's the most, that's the coolest feeling ever, right? You know how many people, I get so jacked. I met this, I'm going to talk, like, um, I was in Australia. Uh-huh. And um, I think the moment, this kid came up to me, big dude. And he was just like, I've lost 100 kilograms uh-huh. of weight over the last year because of you. And I'm like, I'm fat as fuck. <laughs> what are you talking about, my G? And he was like, the way that you live your life and the way that you um, you changed yeah. um, some things, you know, I wanted to change and you are a big inspiration. And it was so crazy. He's kept losing weight. He's lost like over 200 fucking pounds, this kid in Australia in Perth, mm-hmm. and didn't even ask for a fucking photo. Just wanted to hug. Yeah. And I, and I, I, I took... A ton of photos at this thing I did in Perth. Yeah. And I only remember that kid. Yep. And it's crazy. I got an email recently from one of his friends being like, yo, he's just like still so jacked on you. It's his birthday. Yo, can you send like a little video? And I was just like, yo, here's my phone number. Tell him to call me. Yeah. And I, I was, uh, and we talked for like half hour. That's so cool. And, um, you know, that's I'm not, it, I'm not though, trying that's... to be his best friend or anything. And I'm yeah. not trying to, and I don't think he's trying to be my best friend, but I think he's just a real one where I'm like, Yo, like, let's just, I'd love to see how he is. Yeah. And um, I think, like, that, that, those kind of interactions are way sicker than some kid, dude. I was walking down the street the other day in New York, and some kid's just like, ah! Just like, fuck, what the fuck? And like, oh, that's peeking. the worst. And I'm just like, bro, calm down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I ain't fucking goddamn, like, I'm not Angelina Jolie. Yeah, yeah. I'm not fucking, yeah, you know, like, I'm not Barack worst. Obama. Yeah. Like, I make stupid fucking. I make cooking. I'm not. I shouldn't say stupid, but I'm. I make fucking videos. Yeah. Where I talk about grabbing people by the nuts and doing stupid shit. Yeah. yeah. And talking in a way that like I think people. I like talking like that. So. Yeah. Um, I think. Uh, yo, if you're trying to approach me, approach me in a nice way. Yeah. Show some respect. Show some respect. Put just some be respect nice. Because well, just, yeah. I just think it's a way more genuine. Like um. Yeah, I just think anyone you look up to, right, or anyone that has inspired you. Like, like, do you like getting yelled at? Yeah, like nobody likes it. And like the best, the worst thing you can do to that person is just scream at them. The best thing you can do is just say, hey, man, you really affected my life. Like, just be yeah, honest. Just you be know like, what I mean? yo, man, that's chill. Like this, um, it happened yesterday. I went for donuts at, a, what's it called, Sidecar out in Orange County. Mm-hmm. I was visiting some buddies down at the Ruka office. Yep. And uh, went to this donut shop. It was my buddy Luke's birthday. We went and got donuts. And... The girls inside called their friend who was a big fan of mine. Mm-hmm. And I did, they were being cool. Like, they didn't, like, at the donut shop, they didn't say anything. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, this car, like, screams into the parking lot. And this girl's just like, Maddie! And we start laughing because I'm like, oh, I'm like, do I know this chick? Like, yeah. is this somebody, like, from Orange County that I met years ago <laughs> yeah, that I haven't seen I in a that while? Feeling, yeah. I'm like, oh, hi! <laughs> and she's like, screaming. And she gets out and she's shaking. She's so excited to see me. You're like Justin and Bieber. She, and she was just like, I can't believe you're here in Orange County. And I can't believe you're, I used to work at this donut shop. And, and she was just I, like, she was like 
rashing out. Yeah. Like she was like rednecked, like this like sweet little thing, and she was like and, and so you felt sweet. Uncomfortable? Did you feel uncomfortable? No, I was chill because I was just like it was so funny. Like she was peaked. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was so sick. She like tagged me in the photo. She took a photo. We talked for a few minutes actually, because I'm like down to talk. Like yeah. I don't even give a fuck. Like yeah. I'm just like yo, like what up? Yeah. Like I don't mind talking or seeing. Like I find it really. You know, it's a cool trick too. Is just being like. I ask them questions. I'll just be like, like, how's your day going? Yeah, like, how yeah, you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're just like, what? Like, what, what are you? And you're like, all right, talk to you later, you man. You stay on offense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, because people just are like, what? And you're like, yo, how you doing? Like, what's going on? Yeah. I like your shoes. All right. I'll talk to you later, man. I see yeah. Like, what just happened? Yeah. Manny just, just will say, like, my shoes. <laughs> yeah. But this, um, but this girl is so sweet. She, like, tagged me on her Instagram. Uh -huh. And then her mom <laughs> reposted uh -huh. it was just like so happy for her daughter yeah and i was just like that kind of shit's chill that's cool yeah. i love the fact that you can even see that these days you know like you can yeah, see social media where crazy. it goes right you yeah. know you're seeing that interaction um it's a big one i always ask do you have in your life mm. a favorite failure favorite failure yeah i don't know about fa i think um the last eight years of my life, the th I've opened restaurants, I've closed restaurants mm -hmm. because of being unsuccessful, mismanaging money, fucking up, stealing, being a dummy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just think my career is my favorite kind of failure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I get like, that. I think, I think, like, my entire career. Has been an amazing ride, yeah. but has been one giant kind of kerfuffle, <laughs> and and that I could think be like, like a book title. Yeah, my giant, giant line, my giant by kerfuffle. <laughs> and I just think that that um, I think my like I don't got regrets. I don't you know I thought about it a lot mm -hmm. over the last couple of years, and I'm like I don't really have regrets, but I have um, like I I'm just I'm very appreciative. Of how I lived my life, yep. and and the mistakes that I did make, I learned from them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was pretty insane for a while, where I kept repeating some shit, <laughs> yeah. but eventually it clicked, and I was like, "Yo, I ain't an insane person. Yep. I ain't trying to do the same fucking thing, thinking I'm gonna get a different result." Yep. And I think I, um, I think my career thus far has been my favorite failure. Like I just think what I'm about to do with the, my new restaurant and start my new life, yep. like. Um, I'm really excited to just open a restaurant. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited to you know hopefully shoot more cooking show. I don't know. I'm just really right now. I'm really excited for my. I'm like right. I wrote a cookbook. Yeah. Well, I'm still finishing. I got to finish it. Like I'm writing it myself. Mm -hmm. I like no ghost writer bullshit. Yeah. I'm fucking writing my book myself. It's fucking like three hundred and something pages. It's wild. Nuts. And it's recipe based, story based. And it's fucking big, and I'm doing it my. I'm way over um, the due date. Yeah. Uh, my publishers are probably they're mad pissed, but they're being cool. Yeah. But I'm doing it myself, and I'm really fucking stoked on that, and just opening a restaurant. Like I haven't opened. I like, um, you know, I've never opened my restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is gonna be my restaurant. This yeah. is gonna be. You know, I've designed it fully with architects and stuff and designers and. I think I'm just really excited for that kind of shit. Yeah, you know, huge. I, I wrote up my own cookbook, uh, and I'm gonna open my restaurant. That's exciting. Okay, last one. Yeah. What do you? You have lived a hell, hell of a life. Yeah. Maybe like seven or eight of them. There's a few in there. <laughs> if you could go back to little Maddie. Yeah. Uh, just childhood Maddie. And sort of after everything that you've been through and everything that you've learned and give any like little gem mm. to sort of make things a little easier, take the edge off, maybe, you know, avoid some of the stuff with this little sort of thing. What do you think you'd tell yourself? I don't know, man. Yeah. I think not a goddamn thing, man. Yeah. I'm like, I'm so happy yeah. with my life. Yeah. I never, I never fucking really burn somebody. Mm -hmm. I never fucking, um, I don't know, man. I'm like, I lived a pretty, with all this chaos and all of this crazy shit, I never really, like the thing that I would say would be like, yo, you could maybe cool it a bit on Trishy. Like she's been with me a long, she is a saint. 
Maybe <laughs> Stop going I could have. So hard on Trishy, dude. Trishy yeah. is, dude. She's the best mom, best partner. She's a fucking boss. Yeah, you hit the lotto, dude. She is a fucking tank. Yeah, yeah. She's a tank, so and good. I wouldn't be where I am without her. Mm-hmm. Like she's been through all this shit. Yeah, and she's a fucking such a smart fucking powerhouse yeah, yeah, of a woman yeah and you know it really like i don't think she like she definitely did i don't think she saved my life type mm-hmm. shit i always find that weird like when people are like you yeah. saved my life yeah like i saved my life yeah because i wanted to be a part of your life and because i wanted to contribute yeah and now i'm living a life where i'm like yo trish i got you for the rest of your life mm-hmm. i got you all the <laughs> <laughs> Those you you years, man. You know how many birthdays I've ruined? You know how many fucking times we've gotten fights where I've like fucking smashed her flowers against a wall or <clears throat> been so fucked up? Like one time, we were, it was her birthday. Here's a scar, like these scars right here. Uh-huh. Like I punched out, like we were all fucked up in the market and there's this car and it was her birthday and there's this car that was going to be a public art thing and they turned it into like a garden uh-huh. and I like punched out the windows. Yeah. I wanted to see if I could like punch through a car window. Yep. And I was like, well, this is nobody's car. So I like, we were like, fuck this car. Yeah. We're all kind of kicking this car and shit. Yeah. And I like punched out these windows. And uh, I guess I can punch through a car window, which Good was kind of chill. Yeah. And But I, I started like squirting blood <laughs> and like ruined Trisha's birth. Like, I hospital? think I ruined No, I just duct taped it. Oh, <laughs> just duct taped it. I pulled like a piece of glass out of it like months later, like through my skin. Yeah. I was like, there's something still stuck in there and like popped it like a glass zit out of my arm. <laughs> And but like you know, so many times that I've ruined, like mm-hmm. really ruined Trisha's birthdays, yeah. and um, and I'm just like, yo, all this like I would just tell young Maddie, be like, yo, I think arguing drunk never ends well. Yeah, that's a good one, dude. That's I would good. just be like, as soon as you upset, just ghost, <laughs> let it chill, <laughs> yeah. or or like just be like, we'll talk in the morning. I love you. I'm not trying to do this. Like Trisha's. She's cleaned up my barf. She's, I've done so like a world of yeah, pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, I mean, but now it's gonna be just beautiful from here on out. I feel like, bro, you get. To I'm pay trying back. to just have a sick life. I just want to have like a perfect, you know. Um, and I was saying this. I was talking about this the other day. You know, like that whole like fuck you money situation yeah, thing. Yeah. I'm like, yo, if you got your bills paid, yeah, you got fuck you money. Yeah, it's true. And I'm just like, Trish, we got fuck you money now. Yeah. We and made I'm like, it. I don't have to check. Like, I dude, two years ago. I was still in a position where I was just like checking my bank account to fill up gas. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Now I'm in a position where I don't like that's such a crazy milestone for me where I'm like, I don't check my bank account to fill up my tank of gas. Yeah. And that is so sick to me. Yeah. And um Even I'm happy to... at that. Like I'm just like, this is sick. Yeah. I ain't trying to buy some house in the hills. Yeah. I want to buy like a small little farm maybe and have like a house in the city. And I'm so good. Yeah. And I think like um I'm really happy with what I got. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, and I think that's a part where I'm just like, I'm in a position where I can be like, yo, I don't want to do something. I don't want to do that. That's whack. Or that's the fuck maybe, you money, maybe right? I'll take that money and do a stupid YouTube thing with fucking Doritos. Yeah. I don't know. Like that, that was chill. Yep. I did this, you know, like some people are like, you're a fucking sellout. I've done some things with like, um, I did a thing with, it's so funny. I did a thing with like Kraft cheese uh-huh. and I, I, I made a fried chicken sandwich. And I put fucking craft cheese, like American cheese on it. Uh-huh. And people are like, you fucking sell out. I'm like, do we do- what about my mac-, mac and cheese where I put fucking bricks of American cheese in it? <laughs> yeah. You ain't call me a sellout. But the second I finally get paid, yeah. I'm a fucking sellout. Yeah, yeah, I was, that's a, like, yeah. go fucking, dude, yeah. th- that money is like, you know, fuck you. Yeah. <sighs> like, yeah. I find it so funny what people are like willing to be like, you're a fucking sellout. Yeah. I'm like. That's the thing, though. It's a weird thing. Because a- I'm like. They, I'm, I just showed you how to make a fried chicken sandwich yeah. that is so cracking. Yep. And and, and yeah. just because they show a stupid fucking craft little blurb at the front, yeah. I don't even really talk about. It. I've done a few of those like sponsored things, and I think they're, dude. Chefs make no money. Yeah. Chefs yeah. make no money. Yeah. And I've never had money mm-hmm. until literally about two years ago. Yeah. And I'm just like, now I have a little bit of money. Yeah. And I'm just like. For me to make a little bit of money on the side on these like little sponsored things is so funny to me because I'm just like, yo, let's get it. Yeah, like, like Maddie I'm just enjoy like, his craft check. Yo, I'm showing you how to Jesus make a fried chicken. Get it out of your head, kid. Yeah, he's trying to fill up his how gas you thing think, and not worry Why about do you it. get something for free? You you on YouTube watching it for free? Yeah. What am I supposed to do? What yeah. do I get for free? Yeah, you little shithead. Yo, 
it's like Jay and Silent Bob when they go bonk heads yeah, with all those kids on the internet. It's so funny. I remember when it like makes sense. Was, I guess yeah. it's like I'm 35, so it's just like that's funny to me. It's just funny when I started because obviously I watched that movie growing up, and when I started having like social media stuff and all that stuff, that scene made so much sense to me, right? Like, yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, you do feel that way, like you do. Yeah, when I first, dude, when I first had stuff on YouTube, my mom was just like tweaking. She's yeah. like, "Why are they calling you fat, fatty? <laughs> I don't know." Uh. I'm like, "Dude, chill yeah, out, mom. Yeah, yeah. Mom zone. Oh, mom, Maddie, uh, you crushed it, man. Uh, thank you for doing this. You- I think that." Uh, not only you're hilarious, but you did a really good job at like telling the story and sort of having this inspiring element to it. I just think people are gonna love it, and I think that you uh, you just have like a magical touch, man. I think you're gonna like have some really big shit sort of just align for you. You're gonna have a lot of. I hope so. You know, you gonna have. A, I want to make kids that TV the, shows. Yeah, that's my next. That's my. I think I want. What are I, you gonna like about what? Oh, I got I got a whole thing. Okay, that's why I'm in L.A. Really, bro, make a move. I'm trying to. Damn it, I want to make a kids show. I want to make a. I want to make a kids show. I want to do like, dude. There's a lot of shit. Like why? Like I always find that it's funny that I'm like, I want to do a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, and and not in like a weird like, I want to be this like weird monolithic like thing. I just want to like make stuff. Yeah, you just have creative I just, energy. Yeah, like I just want to like be like, oh, can I do that? Yeah. Can I do that? Can I do that? Can I do that? Because I'm like, I like cooking and that's cool and I love restaurants more than anything. Yeah. Like restaurants to me is like. Still, restaurants are the coolest thing in the world to me. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing cooler than restaurants, period. It'll always be my first love. Yeah. Even more, it surpassed, it was a funny thing, it surpassed like hardcore and music and stuff like that. Yeah, that's like restaurants are f- my true love. Yeah. But I'm like, yo, what's up with this kid shit? Yeah, can I make a kid yeah, show? Yeah. Yo, if I can make the next Paw Patrol, I think I got some good ideas. You can have a big farm. If you, in a big, I don't want a big farm. I just want a small. No, dude, no, if no, I had two make, acres. If you make a hit dude, if I had two show. acres, yeah. I'd be so stoked. But if you made a hit kid show and you made. Tens of millions of dollars. No, I buy all. I buy all, every one of my family a two acre little farm. That's good. Damn Get them it. some dirt bikes, rip around on a dirt bike. You know, it's just beef and grizz, dude. On the farm next door, beef and grizz. They would just be smoking weed, <laughs> reading. They just <laughs> playing WoW, day trading, fucking cryptocurrency. Bunch of freaks, man. So good, dude. My brothers are crazy. I love them. Maddie, thank you, man. Yo, thanks you for being it. here. We did it. Keep. You know what I want to do is I want to do a little, uh, I want to do a little, um, I want to do an experiment. And if you listen this far, I learned this from Adam22. If you listen this far, if you made it all the way through this podcast, go on my Instagram, at drama, go on the photo that I posted on my feed for this podcast, and put hashtag zombie lines. That's going to be the key word. Uh, go there, write zombie lines. I just want to know that you guys made it all the way through, that you're listening all the way to the very end, and, uh, I'll make sure I write you guys back and say thank you. Thank you for tuning in. As always, go to youngandreckless.com. Use the promo code SSL for 40% off all full price items. Leave me some good feedback. And thank you guys so much. I'll be back next week.